start streaming. Okay, so we should be live or going live very soon. <laughs> Let us know in the chat if you can see and hear everything okay. Uh, we've got a different audio set up here today, but we should be good to go. So I am joined by special guests Bill and Amit from AMD. We did a video together recently. So you guys were showing at the press day some extreme overclocking stuff, right? That's right. And uh, that was, was that, it was 7950X, that you had uh, two boards? Yes. Asus and Azeroth? Yeah, that's right, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we did a video with these guys previously. This time, what we're going to do is, uh, YouTube popped up, this is a new feature. <laughs> we literally went live like a minute ago. And YouTube just popped up a bubble that says, now would be a good time to insert ads. <laughs> Maybe we should segue to an ad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could do that. This stream is brought to you by Be Quiet and the Silent Winds for Pro Fans. Excellent job. I, I will, I will uh, send their check along to you instead <laughs> of segue. Uh, if you want to check these out, they have noise damping on them. They focus on the uh, frequency and the type of noise. So it's specifically targeted for noise sensitive builds. And a lot of that is just from fluid dynamic bearing to get the annoying frequencies out of the, the bearing in operation. So we've got a link below for that. OK, so let's see what, what people are saying. They're saying, good, they can see and hear it OK, sweet. Uh, and uh, yeah, looks good. All right, cool. Cool, so um, I guess the, the format for this stream is going to be pretty fun. So Bill and Amit are the experts. They're going to walk us through, uh, we're, we'll go through the setup. We're going to go through some overclocking and do some Q&A through the process. So if anyone has questions, feel free to post them. We're not going to hit every super chat today, but uh, we'll do some questions as we go. And um, then at the end, once you guys kind of set whatever mark you want to set for validation or the frequency, uh, we're going to clear BIOS, and I'm going to see how close I can get to that. Okay. Or, or beat us. Yes. I do yeah, not yeah, think, yeah. I'm not going to commit to that. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be really fun, educational for everyone. And this is stuff that can apply to, uh, to normal system builds too. So um, I guess for, we'll, we'll get into like how this can apply to your own computer without liquid nitrogen, how it applies to the work you guys do outside XOC. But I want to pass it to you guys for a second. I'll let you walk through the setup. If you want to just talk everyone through it. Okay. And. Um, I'm going to start transferring some liquid nitrogen into the tank. Perfect. OK. So awesome. if you guys want to take it away on the setup. Yeah, so it's very similar to what we had at the tech day. So anyone that saw that stream, um, it's very similar. So we have uh, on the very bottom an insulated box, right? And it's got, um, in this case, I've got two heaters in here. No, the 70 or 75 watt Kingpin um, heaters. They have a built-in thermostat, and they kind of self-regulate. So there's one kind of under the RAM, and there's another one pretty much right underneath the CPU socket. It's going to get noisy okay. for a, a second for people on stream, but uh, you guys can just talk over and we'll be good. We're, I'm going to transfer the LM2 into the doer. That's what's happening back here. So <laughs> it's going to sound like an alien spaceship for a second. <laughs> Go ahead. You can continue that. <laughs> yeah, so other than that, this is just um, a basic setup with uh, Vaseline. So the bottom of the board, and actually we can kind of lift this up and you can see um, the heater. So there's uh, one on this side and one over here um, with a thermally conductive kind of like rubbery pad under there. Um, and so that's that. The bottom of the board and the top of the board, you know, up to about three quarter down is coated with Vaseline. And so we wipe on the Vaseline and then generally I'll, I'll hit it with a heat gun and kind of let the Vaseline melt in between all the pins and under the BGAs and all that stuff. Um, and get everything nice and coated. So, Bill, did you talk about why we want heaters even though we're trying to go cold? Yeah, so really the only thing that I want cold in this case is the CPU itself, right? So we want to keep everything else above the dew point um, to combat any condensation that we might have. And so that's why we use the heaters uh, underneath the board. Um, the, um, and then other than that, the, um, the pot underneath is covered in a little bit of foam. And then I like to use these kind of janitorial uh, rolls of paper towels that you might find in a bathroom um, because they're not perforated. Um, right. yes. So I can and pull. And there's a free supply at work. <laughs> there's a free supply at work. Um, they're trying to find out who's 
they're taken. Well <laughs> they're well <laughs> stocked. They're trying to figure out. <laughs> they're the trying bandit. to find me, <laughs> the, the paper towel bandit. Yeah, but, as long um, as they don't watch the stream, then your cover is not blown. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still good. Yeah. So, um, so we're this, did you already say uh, the amount you used? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah, there's probably about like five sheets, and it's probably something on the order of around 60 feet, tw 20 <laughs> meters of uh, paper <laughs> towel wrapped <laughs> around. <laughs> yeah, so this this we were talking about as you guys are setting up. Um, I I do like, th let me show you my insulation. Oh, okay? God. <laughs> so uh, Come on, Bill. I yeah. do this, yeah. and then I put this around <laughs> down to pi. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that'll work for about 15 minutes, yeah. huh? <laughs> yeah, so sometimes we have issues with, uh, with condensation. Yeah, yeah. And um, after seeing this, like, I, I, knew, I knew I could do it better, but I didn't think this was the extent well, okay, so that you guys go to. Yeah, I mean, the reason is, we, I mean, I got used to kind of doing it this way, but um, we, we're doing debug in the lab. I posted a picture, actually, on Reddit the other day of uh, one of our development boards um, that we were doing LN2 work on. So. Sometimes, um, like with that particular board, and we were kind of trolling Steve on the last stream, and I super chatted and told him, you know, <laughs> me and him were doing a stream. So we were actually on teams with another guy doing LN2 debug and trying to optimize different behaviors, basically trying to make it so that we can get colder and colder. Right. Um, so, um, in so. the internal live stream. And we need the board to work <laughs> without any fuss for that whole time. So right. when we prep them like this, we can literally run it on LN2 for a whole workday, not a problem. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you do anything on the bottom side of the socket? Yeah, I mean, it's all coated in Vaseline okay. down there as well. Yeah. Okay. And, and these AM5. The heat the heaters underneath. Yeah. And the AM5 socket plate's a little bit different, and there's some air space underneath the hollow area, so I kind of melt some Vaseline in there to, just to make sure, but right. yeah. <laughs> what, um, so for other stuff you have here, so thermocouples obviously into the pot mm -hmm. for the pot temperature. Um, you said you have the heater, is that the heater from Elmore? Is that right? Um, these or aren't, um, I didn't have oh, okay. time to get those set up today. I do, yeah. I do have them. Um, I actually brought one with me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, d I wasn't able to get the software set up in time. So sure. I do have his thermocouple, uh, his thermometer here. Yeah, this is uh, yeah. pretty, this is super nice actually. We'll, yeah. Okay, uh, let's turn around. Yeah, go ahead. So this is a thermocouple reader. Thermocouples, we use them in all kinds of testing, but, um, they're basically, it just gives you a, a pretty quick temperature reading of whatever it's contacting. And this particular reader is just, it's just built really nicely. So it has two inputs, it looks like, right? Yeah, so. yeah. and um, the new version, I, I have that on hand here as well, but um, the new one takes one battery instead of two, and mm -hmm. it has a backlight um, is the main difference, I believe. That's cool, yeah. And um, Elmore provided one to give to you as a gift. Which oh, I, yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> Yeah, and I appreciate that too. He makes good stuff. Anyone's looking into getting into extreme overclocking. Absolutely. I think the website is Elmore's Lab or something. Yeah, dot com. Yep. So, yeah. So what do you have the two thermocouples? Okay, so to? one of them is in the container itself in a hole that's, you know, less than a millimeter from the top of the CPU lid itself. Um, the other thermocouple I have kind of wedged in here, uh, monitoring this inside memory stick um, just to make sure that. Um, I don't want these to get too cold. I want to try to keep these as close to room temperature as possible. So um, DDR, especially DDR5, it can be sensitive to temperature swings during operation. So uh, we want to try to keep them stable. Yeah, so you that's gotta, why. You keep the hot side hot and the cool side cool. Right, exactly. Yeah. So and uh, these AM5 is a little different than AM4 because um, the way that the socket is mounted to the bottom plate. Um, there's a more uh, direct thermal um, conductivity there. So the bottom of the board on AM5 tends to get a lot colder um, compared to AM4. So um, that's something that we kind of had to work around. So yeah. Get you guys some liquid nitrogen too. Oh, yes. Today I have the, the most important and easiest job. <laughs> 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 Keeping the LNT coming. <laughs> <laughs> the, the job is stay out of the way <laughs> and fill the liquid nitrogen. <laughs> so people ask, why isn't it dangerous to put a cap on here? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And we were talking about this earlier, and it comes up a lot. Um, obviously, we don't want to seal um, the container. The LN2, I believe, has an expansion ratio of 698 to 1 um, when it 
turns into gas form, mm. um, so it could be explosive. So what we right. do is basically just uh, cover it, and that's to prevent uh, water vapor from condensing into the liquid nitrogen and becoming ice and then ended up in here. Right. Um, so Which that's kind of, that. and that, so I'll, I'll let you explain, I guess, why that specifically is bad, having water in the pot. Yeah, I mean, it insulates the uh, metal from the LN2, and it gets messy, too. So when you pour in, um, you know, some fresh LN2, and it um, kind of uh, boils rapidly, and it can kick ice out of there. And you'll see me tonight as, um, once we get cold, and it naturally starts to form um, because of condensation, um, I'll blow out the, the pot, and ice will fly right, everywhere, right. right? So, yeah. Um, so let's do... Uh I, I would like people to understand the, uh, a couple things. One is we get a lot of questions when we do these streams about, um, well, but, you know, like, what's the point, right? What's mm -hmm. the point of LN2? People don't run LN2 at home. Mm -hmm. And I think you all are in a better position than I am to answer that because you work at AMD. So, you know, for other than, first of all, the, the first answer is because it's fun. <laughs> and why do you do anything? That's Why do you play video games, right? Yeah. So that's the first answer. Um, second answer, though, so... My understanding is this helps inform some of the design side of stuff. So, like, Amit, I know we were talking about um, the curve optimizer, yep. right? Uh, so, how how does how do you take this and turn it into ideas for like sort of normal use? I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, like, we can start with the history. Yeah. You know, the Zen One uh -huh. first product that came out. I don't, you know, it seems like a long time ago, but it was you know yeah. five years ago it launched. And the overclocking features on there were something called XFR, mm. which basically um, took advantage if you had additional cooling over the stock cooler, you could right. get an extra 100 megahertz. Right? That was kind of for free. Yeah. And then you could also do um, what we call precise and direct overclocking, mm. which is you could just set frequency voltage and, and do it that way. Right. And that right. was kind of all we had on, on Zen. And so, you know, as we're doing overclocking, you know, it was cumbersome for us. Right. So we went in and said, okay, two things. One is we would like a tool to help us do right. that kind of overclocking. That's a whole Ryzen Master set of features that we have. But then what we also started realizing is that it was almost better, um, it, it's very challenging to, to pick the frequency and voltage all yeah, the time, yeah. right? And so if you can just give hints to our, our power management firmware, it can actually make better decisions in some cases and, and uh, allow it to be more managed. So that's what we call our managed overclocking. Mm -hmm. So the first step on that was PBO right. that came out on And this is all stuff that is applicable in, in just normal use, just to be clear on that, too. Absolutely. So like, yeah. yeah, so like that's, you don't need liquid nitrogen for any of that, but um, but the work done here helps inform it. You can use LN2 for really cool stuff, too. Like we were using it for um, for just figuring out what is the actual frequency scale mm -hmm. yeah. because you can simulate coolers by just controlling the temperature with the pour. Absolutely, yeah. Right, so it's, it's really nice for that because even though it's like minus 196 <coughs> C or whatever it is, if you only pour a little bit in, you can keep the temperature at 95, at 90, 85, all the way Absolutely. down. Absolutely. We, we do that too. And you can, with liquid nitrogen, you can play with, uh, you can see what voltage does it request for a frequency now that I'm running cold. Um, you can see the efficiency kind of jump up. And right. you, can run, you could run PBO on liquid nitrogen and get some pretty amazing results um, with just managed, yeah. So right. Yep. Um, let's do. Uh, let's get into some some overclocking, some settings, and okay. start. Let's fire it up. So let's it looks like on. Bill's gonna maybe take over some of the overclocking stuff initially. So, um, do you want to walk me through what um, you guys are planning to do today? Like, what's the sure? So CPUZ validation, I guess, is one. Yeah. So CPUZ validation is what frequency can you get to? Mm. Right. Uh, we want to. I think you kind of teased. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> get, yeah. Get to a big number today. Yeah, um, the goal is seven gigahertz, right? Around there. Uh, and uh, when I was talking to you before going live, you're like, uh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. So I think tech <laughs> day, I think tech day we got to 69.25. We okay. Like yeah. Just short. So. That was on a 16 quart part, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So what are you running? Is it 7950? This is a 7950, okay. yes. Yeah. Um, so initial boot so right now. Yeah. So yep. we want to boot. We want to try and see how cold we can get. That's always the first thing you know in LN2 overclocking is, is right. getting the cold you can get, the, the higher performance you can get. Um, I think we'll go after Cinebench 16 uh, R23. Okay. 16 cool. core. Yeah. And we'll see. You know, uh, how, again, we gotta set the bar so that you can you know try and break it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, well, you're not gonna have to set it very high <laughs> for that. Like so. I'm not gonna get there. So. So so I think all core and Cinebench we should get over six gig. Uh -huh. You know, six three. 
six four if we can manage it. Right, so, right. Um, I think that you were about six four in the tech day for Cinebench, so. yeah. Um, but uh, I also I from uh, talking with other people, my understanding was that was the like the like we're trying overclock at that time anyway. At th at the time it was. Yeah, w well, actually, it was since it was Tech Day. Yeah, we kind of couldn't get too crazy. Right, we needed something that I won't. I don't want to say safe because it's never <laughs> safe to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for the parts that stuff. is. Yeah, but something that would last through you know the, we were there, like, eight hours, hours or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So um, today we'll we'll push it. <laughs> so we're punching a bunch of numbers. Um, some of these, Bill. Let's uh, so let's go over a few of these. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So um, basically, what I did to start off is I loaded. Uh, the Expo profile. So these are 6,400 sticks. So I just went into the profile menu here, selected that, and then that set the clocks and the timings, um, as you can see here. Um, then I went back and changed the frequency to 6,000, but retaining all the Expo timings and the other stuff that it set. Expo had set uh, these three voltages here. Um, these are contained in the Expo profile itself. Um, and then other settings that aren't in the profile are adapted by the platform BIOS um, for the specific platform. And that way, uh, Expo can be platform agnostic. So as we move you know, to the next AM5 platform, um, we, can, um, we don't break Expo. Uh, the next platform will have all of the settings programmed in for when you load an Expo profile if it needs a different VDD MISC or a different right. SOC voltage and so on. Um, in this case, I'm using rather high. You can see that it, it's colored them red here. Yeah, we should um, probably uh, caveat that with. Yeah. Don't don't type these. Don't like copy these numbers into mm -hmm. your water cooled system. Correct. Yeah. Y there's no there's no reason at all. Um, it, it won't buy you anything except for more heat. And right. Rob yeah, you of uh, power budget in the socket. So. Yeah, you don't want to be in L2 mode if you're not <laughs> yeah, using L2. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing I did in the OC tweaker menu is go into the B clock uh, config um, in AMD parlance that'd be ref clock, um, and I'm gonna set the spread spectrum to disabled. Um, so instead of getting like a 99.8 megahertz clock, we should get like a 100 megahertz uh, ref clock. So, um, so it, it results in a few points, but it also uh, maybe a bit more stability um, as well. So. Yeah, you can actually get to a slightly higher frequency with that. Um, so that should be everything in OC Tweaker. So in advanced, um, I'm going to go into the AMD CBS menu, mm. into the CPU, and I'm going to disable uh, global C state. So later on, this will automatically happen when you enable LN2 mode. Uh, today, I don't think that's the case, so mm. we're just going to disable that. C state is, is, uh, is it a power? Yeah. Yep. So Power it management. It's basically x86 when it executes a halt instruction. Mm. We go into different C states. You know, the first one is, you know, halting the clocks. Right. And then eventually, you can power down the core if you're in that state long enough. Yeah. So when so you're you're doing this stuff, you just don't want any play with the power states. Yeah, right. we're not really caring about right. saving. Yeah. saving. <laughs> <laughs> it, it might dither in and out of that power state, you know, a thousand times in a second. Right. So. Um, any kind of power gating tends to be uh, bad when right. we're doing LN2, and that's true also uh, with regard to the iGPU that we're running the display off of, um, and it's also true for the um, for the discrete graphics cards as well, um, in a feature called graphics off uh, uh, in, in that context. Someone's asking, uh, so Anthony just sent in a, a super chat, thank you, and said, there's a typo in the title. Seven gigahertz? <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a typo? I don't think so. <laughs> not, not, not a typo. <laughs> not a typo. <laughs> I've got a system. Uh, it's not a sure thing, but not a right. Thing. So, yeah, uh, yeah uh, I believe this might be the same exact CPU from Tech Day, um, and it is the same exact board from Tech uh -huh. Day. Um, so we kind of know, like probably six nine is around the limit here. Right. Um, but I do have something special over here. Okay. Um, so that. Is this is actually a CPU in this system that I was doing the LN2 debug with Amit on the other night, and so we were able, um, we were very excited. Uh, we were able to hit full pot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We had someone else on the call with us that didn't understand the excitement as much. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> that, that, so, that was Adam. Yeah, that was Adam. So. And it reduces the full going. So full pot. We had this in the video, but 
Uh, it's when you literally just like fill the pot with LNT. You don't mm -hmm. have to control anymore, right? That's or, right. Yeah. And so literally, you know, I took my team's video and I'm like, look, there's yeah. it's it's full, you know. Yeah. Like so, <laughs> so we were excited. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was unique because like Bill was in the lab in Austin. I was in my cubicle in mm. Fort Collins. Adam was in, you know, he lives on an island somewhere. Right. right? And so <laughs> the three of us are all on teams, doing stuff. You know, I, I, Bill's you know having to manually do everything, right, right. And, and so when he's having to fill and, and do stuff, it, it gets get challenging. Yeah. Once it got to full pot, you know, he could walk away. You know, <laughs> I do did. whatever. I had to go to the restroom. <laughs> I was like, all right, guys, I'm gonna fill it up and don't crash it, okay? Because they're remotely logged into it, so we're oh, on cool. like yeah, a remote yeah. desktop uh -huh. where we can all see the screen. Well, that's super. Yeah. And then we're, we're on BNC, teams, and so and we, we could all yeah. be in at the same time. Oh, cool. Yeah. They know when it crashes because their screen disappears, and they're like, "Did it crash? Did it crash?" Like, yeah, 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 yeah so what's, it did. So uh, what's next in setup? Do you have anything else to yeah, change? Yeah, a couple more things, right? And then we'll probably <laughs> we'll probably miss something and have to come back. That's kind of how it works. Right. But um, so in here, that's basically it. Um, oh, so for memory, we're going to do a couple of things. We are going to disable memory context restore. Um, so once this feature is uh, fully working, this is what dramatically reduces the training time when you power up the system. So, um, but um, here, since we're changing the temperature of the CPU so widely um, mm -hmm. and wildly, I guess, um, it kind of breaks that feature, right? So, okay. uh, yeah, you want it to retrain. Right? Yeah, you change the that makes so. sense. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is go to DDR controller config, and we're going to disable uh, power down. It looks like ASRock already took care of that for us. Okay. Um, Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to go to the OC menu, the AMD overclocking menu, and accept the uh, agreement here. Um, in here, so I've already set up the DDR stuff in the OC tweaker menu. Um, all these voltages are already also set up. Um, I'm going to check uh, SOC OC mode, and that looks like Nick enabled that. <laughs> um, I think they're enabling that automatically right now when you load an Expo profile, but I'm not sure. So what this does, is it disables all of the um, um, the the DF and the memory P states, so okay. that the memory and the DF will run at a fixed frequency rather than trying to um, go to a lower power idle state. Yeah, and there's repercussions. It, having your memory and your fabric at fixed speed also means your GMI links, mm. which are the links between the core and the IOD. Those also stay fixed then. Okay. So Which uh, most yeah. people would think about that uh, being attached to the F clock or the fabric mm. frequency. Mm -hmm. The GMI is, is part of that. Okay. Um, okay, LN2 mode. I'm going to go ahead and enable <laughs> that. So right now we don't have everything fully baked into LN2 mode, but we're, we're adding um, all the features that we think we need, and we'll continue enhancing that as we go along. But which, this uh, sorry to interrupt. What, uh, which fan is the one that's the loudest? Uh, oh. This one. Okay. Should we put Is the be quiet up here? <laughs> we can, but I was going to ask if it's going to mess you up if we slow it down a little for the mic noise. Dude, we can put the be quiet up sure, here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey. I, I'm going to need that go. check, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if it fits on the threaded rod. Oh, it will. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, let's see. <laughs> All right. That is pretty quiet. <laughs> It's a little bit different. <laughs> see, it's got M, H, S, and U, H, S. What is that? Ah, it can be louder. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that works. Physical, right. physical switch on the fan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, LN2 mode, um, I don't want to call it training wheels, but it does make a few things easier. Okay. And, um, so you still use it even? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah because, absolutely. like, for example, well, the, the manual mode, is good because it just uh, if you forget to set something you can set some things that you weren't thinking about right we we also automatically go into ln2 mode when you're below a certain temperature i think it's m minus That's 20 c yeah. okay and and so it sets the same things and and that way like cmos gets cleared or something like that right you don't have to boot all the way up to, to, to yeah. zero yeah 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 no that, yeah. that makes a lot of sense yeah. you, you won't get everything but at least if the cmos gets cleared you'll have ln2 mode kick on at least right, right. you may not be able to boot up as cold as what you did with all your other custom settings, mm -hmm. but it's better way than, better, way better. than <laughs> not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. And we intend to improve that going okay. so forward. You think you got it all, Bill? So. Uh, yeah, I think so. Cool. Okay. You want to save a profile? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
tool. That that's always my biggest mistake. <laughs> is like when you, you, you when I was <laughs> uh, I was doing those Rip J competitions. Jay and I were going back and forth. Mm -hmm. It was with uh, X299 and some GPUs. I forget which 2080 Ti maybe, and um, we on my side because uh, I'm not like an expert at this mm -hmm. stuff. My method of figuring it out was like literally just every day spend four or five hours at the bench. You find new settings, like, mm -hmm. okay, got to turn that one off, change this one. But if I forgot to save a profile, it's like, you know, it, you don't have it written down anywhere, anything. Yeah. You have to do it all again. Yeah. You're like iterating through everything. BIOS <laughs> is complicated, man. Like, it's, a, it's the the teams that work on BIOS, uh, I, I have a lot of respect for because there's, there's a lot in there. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a complicated effort, but yeah. And, and the tricky part is that's to work for all these different motherboards. Yeah, motherboards. right. Oh, yeah. So this year, are you going to try and Kay. boot now, like to Windows? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. What's the temperature, man? Uh, negative fourteen. Kay. And so, kind of with all those elevated voltages, that's about where I want to be to start. I don't really want to be at full ambient temperature. Um, so I want to have, I want it to be a little bit chilly. Um, so. Unlike some people, we like to work our way down. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The uh, I didn't mention. I don't think I told you guys this, by the way. So today during the stream, we have a discount code on the store. So on, on store.gamersaccess.net, you want to grab like uh, coasters or mod mats. The code is for ten percent off, and at checkout, if you enter the letters F K N cold, <laughs> it will give you ten percent <laughs> off. Uh, FKN stands for a special technology that we're using here today. I can't tell you what it is. It's, uh, it's AMD proprietary. And cold stands for cold. <laughs> so, so you use FKN cold at checkout, 10% off. You want to grab like the coaster bags. These designs, they're not going back anytime soon. So we, uh, if, if you want to grab one, we're kind of on the last run of this particular set of designs for the coasters. There's four of them on the store. And um, yeah, I mean, if you want to grab them, go get it. Okay, so we're in Windows. Negative 35. Negative 35. So we'll see what happens here. So traditionally on AM4, a lot of folks um, probably remember that um, as you started to go cold, you would reach a point, a temperature, and the system almost universally, like at negative 160 or so, um, it would just want to reboot, and then it would retrain at the colder temperature, like the data fabric mm -hmm. and the memory and all that stuff, and then it would be happy. Um, oh, so, okay. um, but we don't really see that effect on AM5 as much. Um, yeah, my, my brief experience with the one AM5 stream we did, um, <coughs> other than my bad mount, which is what I think was causing the limit to how yeah. cold I could bring it, uh, other than that, it seemed like pretty easy to work on for me. So um, early Ryzen, I remember, when I first tried, I, I think we'd probably start on the 3000 series maybe for, or maybe 2000 when I was doing XOC. But um, that, uh, for me, it was it was a big learning experience because like uh, the big secret there was Infinity Fabric. Yep. 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 And people were still kind of figuring out how it works, so. So we, you know, we did a lot of optimization. 3000, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, by the time that we got to 3000, um, we put in the ability to control the voltages for upstream and downstream for each one of those GMI oh links yeah. um, individually. And we talked about this before. And like on a Threadripper, that could be up to 16 voltages, which is quite a lot. And, and I've spent a lot of time, you know, schmooing those voltages <laughs> right, to dial right, it in. Right. Yeah, so um, lots and lots of hours doing that. So, um, but I think a lot of the optimizations that we did move into AM5 with regard to GMI and fabric, um, those optimizations lent themselves to better cold operation right. is, is what we're observing. Yeah. But, and the other thing is those optimizations help you overclock non-LN2. Absolutely, right? yeah. You, like right now, you know, you can get F-Clock 2000 pretty easy. Uh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. We were running at, um, so I haven't posted this in a video yet, so it's a, a spoiler for people, but um, on a 7950X, I was doing some initial tuning, no special, just a, a 360 millimeter cooler. Mm -hmm. And we were definitely stable at like a 2100 F clock. Uh, 2200, uh, maybe it could become stable, but it would require some additional changes. Yeah. yeah. But, but 2100, like basically no tuning at all beyond that. So. Right. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like th those GMI features that we put in for, yeah. for LN2 can help you get higher F clock on, right. on, on regular OC. So. Yeah, maybe push it. Yep. So, all right. So you got Ryzen Master. 
what uh, what are you gonna set for first clocks? And I gotta pay attention so I can try and do this later. <laughs> well, you already <laughs> missed the most important part. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so I'm gonna uh, synchronize everything together uh, using this button. So this will make it so I can just adjust one and adjust ah. all of them um, because we can we can separate it so I can control oh, per CCD. one of the eight core CCDs and have the other one at a different frequency. Um, I can even decouple the cores. Right. And so this, whatever you set the fastest core at, you're going to get that. Um, and then it'll divide down for the rest of them. So you may not uh, get exactly okay. what you expect here. Um, and he there might are rules. There's rules. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he had to school me <laughs> on the rules. So, um, but um, yeah, if you're chasing like a single core and you know which core is your best core, like this one is advertised here, um, and you're chasing frequency, this might be a way to go about it. So okay. we give you that yeah. option. Um, so to, to kind of start, I'll put them all together, and then we can just set five gig. Um, so for, for reference here, let's say you're just running out of the box, no changes beyond maybe Expo or something. Uh, standard cooling, I guess in, from memory, I think our 7950X in the review was hitting in an all-core workload something like 50, 78 megahertz sustained, like mm -hmm. at steady state. Yep. Um, like for something like Cinebench. Like yeah, that was for Blender. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty similar. And then uh, I guess the there's a little bit of a range there, right? Like from silicon fitness, I guess, or silicon quality, or is it just purely based on temperature and power? There will be yeah. It, so each part individually manages, mm. you know, based on you know in manufacturing we we go ahead and, and figure out the capabilities of each part. Right. Now they're like for a 7950, it's, just, it's a small range, but there will be some range between parts. They won't all be exactly the same. Then your sense. cooling will matter, your power delivery will matter. Uh, we have a question here from chat. <coughs> Steve, can you send me the CPU they use after the tests? I can use it. Um, so if you guys want to just, we'll get your address later and <laughs> <laughs> send it out to you. Yeah, I, no I would say uh, <laughs> unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess, Bill, if you want to like get a test running or, or you know either Cinebench or validation, and let me pitch this um, question to you, Amit. So, uh, what is? I, I want to modify the, the question a little bit. So, what what's been your favorite CPU to put under LN2? Like, of all time, or yeah. in the current gen? All time. Yeah. yeah. All time. What was the most fun? It was probably. I mean, it, it, it's, it's kind of the, the um, levels you get to, right? So the uh, you remember the first time you got to 5 gig yeah. all core? Yeah. Was that Zen 1? I think it was Zen, Zen 1, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Zen 1, um, and then the next big milestone was 6 gig. And I think right. we were just short on Zen Plus. Uh, we got there on Zen 2. Yeah, um, or d definitely by the time we got to Zen 3, um, Splave and some other folks were posting right. 6.1 gigahertz. So. Yep. Yeah, we've gained a little bit since then on yeah. this new platform, yeah, for sure. For yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the, the most fun, <laughs> actually, I think it was Matisse, right? So Ryzen 3000. Mm. I remember we were doing Bring Up in the Lab, and <laughs> I went and found Bill, and we, <laughs> we took one of the boards from the, from the Bring Up Lab, yeah. and we took it down to the OC Lab, and I, th I think we got the full pot like on the first day of bringing up a new chip. So yeah, that's so pretty good. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, there's a question here of, do you delid the CPUs when you're you're doing extreme overclocking? No. Or you just run them lidded? Nope. We run They're them lidded. lidded, yeah. Yeah. And part of it, the pressure of the pot, right? If you that put that directly on the silicon. crack the silicon. It would, it would I mean, we've done it. Um, so on AM4, I modified um, one of my containers. I had to take a notch out of the bottom of it. To, so that it could fit over <coughs> the socket where the cam is. Uh -huh. um, and then, yeah, we did direct die on like Zen Plus. And um, I kind of repeated what, what Durbauer showed that it was worth maybe 25 megahertz sure. back then, right? So is there, a, is there when you do direct uh, die, except with liquid nitrogen pots, other than the pressure maybe mm -hmm. cracking it, I mean, does, does it care about the cold? Like does no. it's removing the interface doesn't really affect it. No, it, it behaves the same. Um, okay. One of the tricks when you do that, um, if you don't have um, like a fancy retainer clip and stuff like that, I used uh, a racer putty. Okay. And I made yeah, four yeah. little dots on each corner so that it could support the weight of the pot as I, as I oh, screwed so it, it down. Compresses. And then it would slowly compress down onto it. That's yeah. a smart way to do it, yeah. yeah. The way it doesn't slam down. Yeah. Um, I'm going to grab the one of the delated chips so we can use it as a 
a prop to show some stuff, and then walk us through, I guess, Bill, for what you're doing right now, what, what you're trying to hit in Cinebench, or what you have hit. So it's, uh, I've got it running all core 5.6, and this should be, this should get us right around kind of what the performance would be a stock on this chip. Um, yeah. And we're at minus 120. A little better, right now. actually, because we hit almost 42,000 oh, yeah. points. Yeah, so. Right. Um, I think the previous record was like 40,000 some. Yeah, uh, I think. Under so. LN2. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Okay, yeah, so that was 5,600. This uh, is, to be clear, was not killed in the extreme <laughs> overclocking lab. That is correct. <laughs> Contrary to popular rumor. <laughs> <laughs> but it is one that was never even lidded. That's right. So, uh, but you could see like on the on the lid itself. Put this down. Where, on the lid itself, you can see where there's like not even any solder or anything there. Um, so, I need to, there we go. <laughs> that. Oh, nice! It's a fan and a fan. Excellent. That was entirely intentional. Um, yeah. So that's what it looks like when it's delidded. Just since we we're talking about that. Uh, but, uh, I mean, in terms of, I guess the biggest thing this time with delitting is it's a lot riskier to do because <laughs> of the SMDs on the, I mean, as if you're going to delit it with like a razor blade or something. Yes. There's yes, a lot more stuff you can cut off of it. Yes. So. Yes. You don't have the, the solid line or, you know, yeah, for the lid. Yeah, because the lid's the shaped better, yeah. a little differently, so, yeah. Yes, um, and yeah, I mean, obviously we don't recommend delitting. No, but yeah, yeah. If you do, and the officially, yeah. you know, heat is always your friend. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and the other thing people talk about is like the, the heat spreader, and, mm. you know, is it, how is it different from the previous gens? Right? And I think, you know, uh, part of our goal was to was to match the Z height. Right. For, for cooler compatibility. Yeah, that um, makes sense. And so I, you know, I think the heat spreader might be a little thicker, but uh, you know, yeah. our testing has shown it's a, it's a pretty small effect. For um, this this error, so I see this when. Uh, does this tell you anything specific when this happens? Like, does that yes. give you an indicator where to go next? Yes. What this is saying is basically you're hitting a, a speed pass on the chip. So, oh. Okay. So in that case, basically your 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 frequency is too high for the voltage you're at. Okay. Right. So, so it's it's basically yeah. saying either decrease the frequency or increase the voltage. Yep. I guess. Or yep. or make it colder, and you'll see. I'm not going to change anything. Okay. We'll make it a little colder. And as long as it doesn't crash because of that, um, then then it'll it'll complete that test without changing anything. So right now else. you're plunging in temperature. It's down to one minus one twenty, yeah. minus one twenty three. This is really fast response on this. Uh, let me try and show this to the camera, I guess. Yeah, this is a great container. Yeah. So I'm gonna. It'll be upside down. Sorry, everyone, but <laughs> I don't want to move it too much. Um, really fast response on the. Uh, yeah, if you pour, it'll be obvious. It's like. And that's just a little drip, right? Yeah. I'm trying to keep it from getting too cold. Um, but we'll, we'll go to negative 140 and try to run this again. I think, I think this test will pass after we cross that threshold. Right. And, and kind of rule of thumb is every 10 C is about 100 megahertz. So that's kind of what, okay. we, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, what we use. And that's why if you can get to full pot, you know, like it's worth buy, it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's worth hundreds of megahertz. Right. So, so yeah. we're at negative 147. Same frequency, same voltage. Same everything, yeah. And so I think we're, we should be good here. So that kind of demonstrates the effect of uh, reducing the temperature. So mm -hmm. that passed. Yep. And it would continue to pass without changing anything else. In fact, we could probably even bump up the CPU frequency a little bit now. I could probably like run 6. Let's see. So no more voltage. It's at 1.3. And I'll make it a little bit colder. And then we'll see what happens. And then. We have a question. Is der Bauer da? No, he is not here. <laughs> <laughs> is der Bauer is, he's in the back. He's actually pulling dude, all the strings. <laughs> dude, if you were to pop out right now. <laughs> 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 what LN2 pot? That one you just mentioned, reactor? Yeah. So this, um, I worked with him, and he created um, a version of the reactor 2.1 specifically um, for me. And one of the modifications I did was I had him make the uh, cold plate, the bottom of it, the same exact size as a thread ripper. Oh, OK. Um, yeah. And so we gained some length and some mass uh -huh. um, because of that. Um, but, but, but this is primarily designed for AM4, but I have all the brackets and stuff, and I have absolutely uh, used this on thread ripper. Because the thing with this pot 
is it's extremely efficient um, at pulling down the temperature using As we just saw. a yeah. little yeah. bit of liquid nitrogen. Yeah, right. so we call it a fast pot, and it's fast yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, so I can change the temperature up or down very rapidly and this, then hold I don't it know there. if this is maybe a question for the companies or the, the guys that make the actual on two pots, but do you either of you have any understanding why, like what makes it react faster or slower? Yeah. Internally? Yeah, I mean, it, um, it just has to do with the ratio of mass to surface area. Yeah, and so if you could get a good look in here, it'd be difficult, but it is drilled out and then the holes that he drilled, he tapped them with threads so that it has more surface area because of that. Um, and then not only that, he then went in and milled out notches, like. Andrew's going handheld here. Here we go. <laughs> so, uh -huh. <laughs> a little risky. So there's the top down. How does that look? Let me see. Ooh, that looks oh, nice. Yeah, looks good, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Get some props for Andrew in chat. <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> so it's risky going handheld with an HDMI cable sticking out the back. <laughs> <laughs> that thing looks crazy. I hadn't actually looked in this one yet. Cool. Yeah, he, he 3D printed um, different uh, retaining brackets with my handle and different AMD logos and Ryzen and stuff like that. So Yeah. Um, so That's yeah, it, we bumped it up 50 megahertz mm -hmm. and I ran it again. I didn't change the voltage and, and it, it passed. Works. So okay. we've got more. So that's just, you know, that so shows. You're at 45K already? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Which Minus is what? 140. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you got to on the. That's what I got stuck okay. at, yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. Yeah. You're in trouble, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've got a list of all that stuff I changed. <laughs> so I'm trying to remember. I think you got stuck on frequency. Like, you got stuck at 6.2. So, that, yeah. In pre testing, yeah. I think I was kind of running 6.3. Then I broke it all down to, to uh, get the water off and stuff. Mm -hmm. Set up the next day. I got stuck at 6.2. And later, I don't think I did this on stream, but when I pulled the pot off the CPU, I see like a oh, quadrant had pretty poor contact. Yeah. And I mean, you know, like Bill, thankfully, has brought me more hardware because <laughs> Joe Staponzi, <laughs> aka Bearded Hardware, uh, I think he sabotaged you. <laughs> so, so something's missing. <laughs> yeah. The, I, as much as I appreciate it. So it was nice. Though. He gave me my first set of like, hardware for an Allen 2 pot because he visited he's like do you have any hardware to actually secure this thing to the to the CPU I'm I surprised said, you ended up with four of the <laughs> legs <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he left me with three cap nuts and then four threaded rods and so every time I, I have one corner that's just not quite secure <laughs> and um, where's the springs and the top hats uh, we don't, we don't, you don't have any of that, huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, so did that, was that the corner that didn't have good contact? Yeah. It was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, not a surprise, right? Like, <laughs> the, the weight of the pot helps a little bit, but you'd only get so far with that. It, it starts sliding around, too, if, uh, yeah. depending on the pace you use. So. Yeah. That's one of the tricky things with this particular <laughs> pot as well, um, has to do, do with that, but um, because it's a two-piece and it's not very easy with the bottom being so big. Normally I put a uh, closed cell foam ring around it, but I can't do that on this. I have to use a thinner foam. So. Right. People love that uh, top down shot, Andrew. I'm just looking through the chats. It was risky, but it was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I bumped up to 1.4 volts. We're at 6.1. We're at negative 150. And um, I, um, I think this part we can bench probably like to negative 180 without too much fuss, but and we might crash going cold here. You're we'll up to 4,000 concurrent viewers now, by the way, which is great for uh, for our streams. That's that's uh, getting into the high side, so no pressure, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our previous high was three, so okay, that's, yeah. yeah, that's so we're at negative 170 here. Okay. Okay, and we had an app crash. Okay, so this again, it's the same thing as last mm -hmm. time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So which this is better than. Like a full system crash. So are you sure. gonna? Right. Are you gonna increase voltage for that, or are sure. you changing clocks too? Yeah, I'll just change. Um, we'll just go to one five, and, and we'll see how far that'll get us. Is that a point zero five increment or? Uh, one hundred millivolts is what oh, I just added. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're at negative one sixty four. Um, yeah, we, and at this temperature, this is the Leiden frost temperature uh, oh, yes. for LN2. So it changes. It, it's a much different boiling sound when you hit this temperature. Okay, so I've noticed right. the sound change. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you know when you pour LN2 off your hand, yeah. and it, right? That's the Leiden frost effect, similar to 
putting water on a hot skillet and it skitters around, right? right? So once you hit about negative 160 or so on the metal, it's cold enough to where the LN2 doesn't form that gas barrier anymore. Um, and it directly touches it, and so you get a much more rapid boil. Okay. So, um, and if you happen to be full pot, like it, the pot's full and it hits that temperature, it'll erupt LN2 everywhere. Like oh, really? Volcano. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So, when it gets directly in contact, it's yeah. close to that vapor barrier. Specifically, minus 164, though, is where you get that change. Yeah, okay. yeah, something like that. Yeah. Do you guys do you, um, glaze the pot at all? Like when you heat it up and then. Because I know some people are really big and basically like pour and then I guess they heat it. And then they, they flash it. Yeah, yeah I mean, but that, that has to do with uh, modulating the temperature. So usually what they're doing is there's a workload running and they're dropping the lid temperature below a temperature that would cause a cold bug where the system uh, would crash, okay. yeah. right? So then they're adding heat at the last minute to heat the lid back up above that critical temperature. Right. So when the workload stops, then it'll be okay and not crash. Because the workload, you know, you're generating one, two, three hundred watts mm -hmm. or whatever in the CPU. So that's just making pure heat. Right. Um, and so the effective temperature of the silicon is a lot higher. When it goes idle and it's almost zero watts, all of a sudden, you know, all that heat uh, goes away and uh, the silicon rapidly drops temperature so you could cross into the danger zone uh, depending on what temperature your CPU can work I at. I like the comment that just came through from CC that, uh, as you're explaining that, that just says, damn, this man knows things. <laughs> <laughs> I learn from a lot of good people. <laughs> All right, what's, uh, what's the next goal you're at? One, were you at 1.50 now for yeah, volts? And yeah. the, so V-Core 1.50. Uh, minus miss, 160. Minus 160, yeah. and then miscellaneous and um, SOC, you're still at whatever you set in BIOS. Yeah. So yeah, is that like 1.35? 1.35 one, one, and 1.4? One oh. Was one at 1.4? One I, I don't know, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think you're cheating. <laughs> I'll check the uh, – <laughs> I'll scroll back on the stream. See if it's but still there. But actually, you want to show me Ryzen Master? Actually, yeah. Oh, so I don't know what that was. <laughs> Let's see. How hot do we have to get? I've got a torch if you need it, too. So while Bill's getting that uh, up and running for the next pass, let me, let me ask a question here from chat, from Super Chat. So uh, let's see. Might you guess from or Okay. I'm going to modify this question a little bit. Um, so we had a question from Hal Richard, $5 super chat, thank you. Uh, so the, the original question was what kind of frequency might you guess for an all core, uh, oh, at zero centigrade, zero. okay. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to predict that kind of stuff, but. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a fair question. Like, like I said, so you get about a, you know, 100 megahertz for, mm -hmm. for 10C, right? So it depends what you're running. Uh, if it, like an all core workload versus versus one T. Right. It's also kind of hard to. I mean, I guess you. So mm -hmm. one of the things I was talking about in the reviews is how since the temperature uh, is not part of the boosting behavior as like the the ceiling, so like 95 C ceiling for boost till it hits the temperature, like on a 7950X out of the box. Um, uh, it gets kind of weird with like, if you put a better cooler on it, it is reducing the temperature effectively, but it's it still looks higher. So you, instead of changing the temperature now with a cooler change, you're changing the frequency. Yeah, what you're doing is for that same temperature, you can get there with the lower voltage. Right. Uh, and, and because of that, you can then raise the voltage and get more frequency. Right, right, yeah. So, yeah. You, you, you end up at the 95, you know. And there's been a lot of questions about that, obviously. Yeah, I think um, oh, it's booting back up. We had another question I'll throw out here earlier. It was in chat. Someone asked, um, do you need a special kind of thermal paste for liquid nitrogen? Any opinions on that? Yeah, um, you do. Um, some thermal paste tends to uh, solidify and kind of, I don't want to say crystallize, but, um, and then it- It basically freezes. It, yeah. it freezes and yeah. de-adheres, mm. okay? And a lot of times you can hear it. it this, we the call crack. it crack, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And um, so when that happens, you can heat back up and, and, and it'll reset. Um, but then, you know, uh, th that's not a big problem. I haven't faced, um, we use some Dow Corning stuff in the lab for yeah. like when we're uh, doing a lot of swapping around. 
And then Slave sent me this. I don't know if he's sabotaging me or if this is good. <laughs> I don't know what he's done, but it, um, but I've been using it, and that's what's uh, that's what's on these. Um, I call it Smurf paste. Right. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, Slave, if anyone doesn't know, is uh, is another extreme overclocker. Has a lot of records posted on like Hardware Bot and stuff like that. 3D Mark Hall of Fame. He worked on. This isn't like. This isn't an AMD thing, but he worked on um, with Der Bauer on the uh, contact frame stuff for the Intel CPUs, where mm -hmm. Splave basically c cut a hole in a motherboard. Yes. And uh, he did that so he could take the socket out with the CPU, so he could get the clamping force, so that it would be the same sort of bend yep. or curvature, and then he could lap it. Yeah, he lapped it, it inside there. Yeah. Which is like awesome that <laughs> someone thought to do that. So he, he sent me a picture of that. And uh, he was like, do not share this with Nick. Well, he <laughs> Roman ended up sharing it with the internet. So, <laughs> so, so at least you didn't share it. Uh, okay, All so. Right, I'm just messing around here. I was going to show um, uh, he wanted to see. So um, all the voltages and stuff are set here. So you can, the memory stuff is at 1.4, 1 1.4. 4, 1 4, um, VDD, VDD MISC, like you asked about, yeah, 1, 3, 5. Um, VDDG, this is something that ASRock is doing at 1.2. Um, I'd like to point out um, VDD MISC needs to be probably 75 millivolts or more higher than VDDG mm. because it feeds VDDG. Okay. Um, this particular BIOS is setting 1.2 here and then VDD MISC at 1.1 1 .1 out of the box, so just be aware of that. Um, so. But uh, yeah, this is what he had set, and and I'm just kind of leaving it alone. Yeah. Um, you can see uh, VDDG uh, for IOD one, uh, CCD zero, CCD one, IOD zero. So we have all sides of the link covered here, where right. you could adjust those. So. Uh, okay. Cool. And then. Um, and honestly, I don't know why it was being so fussy uh, because. Um, because I've already been running this part like way faster than that, so yeah. we'll, we'll try again and see sometimes. Sure. The, the uh, I don't know if anyone's noticed, by the way, the hair dryer <laughs> uh, that's being used here today. What's wrong with the hair? Nothing. I don't have to worry about litigation, so I can show it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I do either, but I was told to be careful. Let's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> do it. <laughs> yes, at, Safety. at official AMD events or <laughs> Right. Someone's, someone's talking. This, we get this comment all the time, so I'm just going to do the demo I do in all these really quickly. Um, there's a question about or a comment about uh, like gloves and safety and stuff. Yeah. We get this one a lot. So um, I'll actually, to make the point even more, this is just a hair tie. Uh, the TSA asked me a lot of questions about that once. I don't know why. Wow. <laughs> like, what's on your wrist? <laughs> okay. Like, anyway, this, if I leave it on when I do the demo where I pour on my arm, uh, it will stain a tiny bit, not a lot, but basically this line frost effect that Bill was talking about earlier, where you can see it just basically sort of evaporates immediately. And so in terms of gloves, it's really what the, that does is, uh, oh, and taking this off is because it'll sort of soak. Yes. It gets stuck. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, anytime liquid nitrogen soaks, that's when it's not safe. Where like, if you were to cup your hands and pour it, that would be bad. That would be it'd be the same as putting your hand on a stove. Um, but gloves like these, uh, while kind of nice to have, uh, at most I'll use this if I'm doing a lot of transferring. Yeah, that's um, what we do as well. Yeah, yeah, where you're pulling out of the liquid nitrogen tank and you've got like. A uh, transfer hose that freezes basically and and hurts if you grab it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll use it for that, but for pouring and stuff, I don't like using gloves just because um, I feel like it almost becomes more dangerous for me or, or at least more difficult to handle everything. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it makes things a little more cumbersome, especially if you're trying to finally pour something. It's yeah. hard with the gloves. The other thing we found, you know, depending on how the gloves are made, a lot of times you get like. Patches, patches right? or holes in, in here, and, and it hurts actually way yes, more. It's, yeah, because it soaks it up and holds it next to your yeah. skin. Yeah, so it actually can make things worse. Yeah, so there's different types of yeah. gloves. Obviously, I don't know yeah. a lot about them, but the ones I have at the seams, they're made for this. Like they're cry. Yeah, they handle the temperature, right? They handle the temperature. But where the seam is, where they stitch it all together, 
um, you can still get some soak, and that mm -hmm. actually hurts more than if you didn't have the gloves. So that's, yeah, that's true. You know, not not safety advice. You do whatever you want to do to be safe, mm -hmm. but um, that's just that's why we're not using them today. Yeah, yeah. and usually when I'm at the bench, um, I, I'm standing up all the time. I'm known at AMD like as standing all the time. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah at, if you're sitting at a bench, um, I see a lot of guys doing that. That's more dangerous because we have had a spill on the table right, one right. time. Right, and it um, it could end up in your lap. That, right, that right, didn't right. happen to us, but um, but but yeah, that's the main thing I worry about because, like you said, if it gets on your pants yeah. and it soaks in, you're you're kind of in trouble. So. Yeah, yeah, that's the same with uh, Stefanzi when he was doing the first XOC demo with me. He was basically like, "Hey, when you're pouring from the doer into the thin, don't get it on your shoes because yes, right. it'll soak your socks. Shoes, shock, yeah, yeah socks." Uh, yeah, our other guy on the team, Anil, uh, insists that bare feet or sandals is the way to go. <laughs> so <laughs> he, he might go farther than that even. Yeah, I was going to say, he can take it a step further. <laughs> Can't stream that, though, at least not on YouTube. Uh, how many gigahertz are we at now, someone says? Uh, we were at 6.1, okay. but it was being fussy. So um, I had a little... I had a, um, when I put the pot on, I was kind of questioning if it was perfectly straight. Uh -huh. um, and I had to kind of tweak it, so there might actually be a problem there. You've so got another one over there, I too. I do, so yeah. If we need it, we've got another we can run. Yeah, like I said, this one's actually a little tricky to get perfect. Um, so we'll try this again. Um, no, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. So what, what voltage are we at, Bill? 155. Five in. One. Oh, Ryzen Master. Yeah. Uh, so should. Yeah. Do you have the new one? Um. No, I don't. <laughs> We're gonna do a secret file swap. You here. got it right there. Yes. Okay. Um, and, um latest benchmate is supposedly downloading, but it doesn't look like it ever finished. Can you see if it okay. is working? All right. So we had do you, quick question for you from from chat. Do you either of you have a preference on Windows 10 versus 11 for this? Um, the only reason I'm not using Windows 11 is because um, I saw that CPU Z was taking a long time to open. Oh, okay. And when we were benching for like the all in one and the LN2 records a couple of weeks ago, um, I just mainly switched over to Windows 10 because it's hard to get screenshots with all the CPU Zs in there if it takes like 45 seconds for it to open. Um, so that is literally the only reason um, right. yeah. I'm on Windows 10. <laughs> so. I brought a Windows 11 disk with me, so uh, I'm going to actually go to BIOS and do a tweak real quick. Okay. Um, I have the old version of Ryzen Master on here. I don't think it supports the full voltage range. Right. I think that's actually the bug I was just hitting. So The 1.55? Yeah. Okay. So um, yes. I'm going to... Um, so I'm giving you the hot off the press one here, Bill. And I'm, I'm just going to do the old uh, Zen 3, Zen 2 trick uh, where I'm going to add a positive offset in the BIOS. And then whatever I request from Ryzen Master, it'll it'll add that offset to okay, it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's the one you were telling me about previously. That's where right. Yeah, yep. you can kind oh, of and trick then it. Bill, the other thing is, did you set fixed frequency and voltage in BIOS? Mm -mm, we can do that. Yeah. So we saw that was one of the keys to getting the full pot. We saw, okay. which was these surprising. are the these are the real <laughs> secrets. Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay. Yeah, but because you know we, we're planning to adjust it in, you know, once we boot up. Right. But we found that if you start off fixed. It actually adds to the stability. Okay. So, so that's just as simple as uh, yes. changing uh, CPU overclocking from auto to custom. Uh -huh. And then they already have, I guess, 4500, 125 in there, and that's actually fine. So I'll leave, leave it like that. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in external voltage and then CPU voltage, and then I'm going to do offset mode. And then um, this is in millivolts, so I'm going to do 100. And then whatever I tell Ryzen Master to set, it's going to be 100 millivolts mm -hmm. more than that. So, um, on load line, we'll leave it at level two. Okay. Um, we can explore that later. Um, like when we get to the edge, maybe we can right. do that to get a little more. I can answer this question if you guys want to jump in, go for it though. Someone asked uh, Steve, can you please ask them about liquid metal for LN2? So liquid metal. Uh, it gets worse as it gets colder. Yeah. So if you get to like zero or negative on the temperature, it basically becomes a, a, an insulator. <laughs> it becomes a wall. 
Um, yeah, I, I haven't tried it, but that's what I've heard as well. Yeah. Yeah, my I don't know. There is a name for that chemical process. I don't know what it is. Thermal Grizzly would obviously would know, but yeah. Um, but it, it basically, yeah, it basically more or less just loses its conductivity as the temperature comes down. So it's awesome at, at high heat applications where you are not bringing the temperature of like the whatever's contacting it down to like say zero or below. But as soon as you start doing liquid nitrogen, you just hurt yourself. If you use liquid metal; it's not gonna not gonna perform. Yeah, it might be. I don't know if this is why. I'm assuming it's because it kind of solidifies. But uh, well, it certainly does. Um, it before zero, even it'll be solid. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know the mechanism or anything about it. But certainly, I know like nobody in the XOC community is using liquid right. metal for LN2. Yeah, if you're gonna do ambient overclocking though, and you want like every degree Celsius you can get without doing dry ice or anything exotic, then liquid metal makes a lot of sense for that stuff. You have to be careful with applying it since it's conductive electrically. So. Yeah, and that actually came up um, with regard to the AM5 and the exposed um, SMT components on the, on, on the substrate. Right. Um, to, and there was some discussion internally at AMD about it, and my reply was that the folks using liquid metal probably are going to use nail polish or right. something like that to cover those mm -hmm. components, um, and they probably already know that, right? Yeah, so you normally insulate those SMDs around yeah, the... Exactly. Yeah, but it's, it's always a good reminder if you're going to do something like that. Okay, so what's the... So you got your offset applied. Yeah, can you... I, I'm kind of curious, Bill, because you did a fixed voltage and an offset, so I wonder what it really set. Um, so... I'm going to guess it's at 135 at the moment, and then once we go to precise and direct, um, we should be okay. So it's at 1. Oh, yeah. So um, I already put it in precise and direct, um, and I applied 1.45 volts. Okay, and it added and 100. And that's what we got, yeah. Cool. So we're at 5.5, we're five, five, not 4.5. Mm -hmm. So, and then uh, we'll just walk it up from here. The questions are always fun. These, these are pretty good questions today. Uh, I don't know the I don't know what they're referring to in this one, uh, but so the first part I do. What about graphene, like as a contact? And then the the other yeah. part was or that NASA heat material, which unfortunately I'm not sure what that's referring to. <laughs> but I'm sure NASA has a lot of like thermal interfaces that we don't know about. Graphene, though, uh, if it's like those pads, yeah, it's uh, I would guess it's just too thick for anything like this, where it's not gonna. Well, I mean, we have them um, in the lab, and um, we have um, some folks in the lab that need to uh, change processors quite a lot, mm -hmm. um, and they use those so for a number of reasons, but it, uh, it's not the best, um, right. but it's consistent, and they're somewhat reusable, and they don't make a mess. They don't make a mess. So they're, they're quicker to change. Yeah. Out. Like if you're doing sense. volume stuff. You yeah. Know, that really makes a lot of sense. So when those yeah. guys, they need to be able to uh, mount the heat sink and have the same performance time after time, mm -hmm. and that's why they use them, even though they know it's they're like giving the up best. a little bit of performance. Because, yeah. you know, some people beat it, some people put right. the line, some people... Yeah. <laughs> or manually spread it <laughs> yeah. or whatever, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you got it running again. Yes. So, so 42K for initial run just to get it going. At 5.5. Five. Yeah. So we'll walk it back up and, and see how much fuss we get. I think this is probably a one-word answer. Will the warranty be affected by doing this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the warranty will be affected. This part is not happy. I think yeah. um, I might have a mounting problem here. Yeah. So um, maybe we switch to the gene you now. Yeah, switch boards. Yeah, I think okay. I think so. You, you think? I think so. You did, I mean? Did you try it? I mean, um, so you gotta, you gotta get much colder. Right? Well, no, yeah. no. No. <laughs> so I'll bring it over just in for case. for six yeah. gig. Like negative fifty makes it easy to do. So negative one hundred, we're fine. But we'll try a couple things mm -hmm. before we uh, switch completely. So. Okay. So there we're at negative one sixty. Let's try this again. I still love seeing the just how liquid nitrogen reacts every time we do anything like this. It's fun to work with. Uh, let's see. Got a 
Uh, a lot of questions, man. Yeah. So many questions about like paste and interfaces. Yeah, I think um, we can heat it up and um, and switch to the Gene. Okay. Switch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, that one has a six core. Yeah. So um, I might be able. So let's, let's I might be able. We can boot that one up and might be able to get this one uh, properly Working mounted. Yeah, yeah, I okay. think so. So uh, we'll let Bill start to break this one down. We're going to switch to a different board that they brought, different setup entirely. And all that's going on here is Bill is going to basically thaw it out as much as he can, kind of pull it apart. And then this one is already assembled. It's built in the same way. Um, did you say this is a six core 7600X? 7, it is, yeah. Okay. Is this the magic 7600X? It is. It is a magic 7600X. Oh, magical. <laughs> <laughs> you will have to wait and see why this one is magic. Uh, so, uh, this is crazy. I haven't actually looked at the setup you guys did on this. So, it's a Gene, Asus Gene board, uh, and it's two DIMMs, which. Two DIMMs can, my understanding is, feel free to jump in anytime if you want to correct something I say, but my understanding is that two DIMMs uh, is easier to get uh, a better memory overclock uh, with higher better stability. Me higher memory speed, yeah. Because yeah. you don't have the extra routes for the other two channels. Yeah, so. Or the other two DIMMs per channel. And yeah, so you're just talking to two sticks right next yep, to each yeah, other. Yeah, you still have the two yeah. channels. And, but yeah, it's less routing, it's easier to route. In the on the board, and, and it looks you can get more optimized routes. It looks like there's a like a dim dot two or something in there. Is that what that is, or the card? It's their new one. They call it. Um, they actually call this Gen Z, and it's not to be confused with the PCI standard Gen Z. Ah. Um, but that yeah, thing is huge. So yeah, it's got fins and a heat pipe, and it's got two M dot two sockets on it um, for uh, Gen five NVMe. So yeah, I've got the OS cool. uh, inside of there. Yeah, and it plugs. So the old one, um, DIM.2, used what looked like a DIM slot, and it had right. a big keep out on there. So this is a little different than that. Um. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for more questions that I might bring up. So yeah, right now, basically, we're swapping boards, CPU, and um, where's the other one? This one, should we like, Ahmed, is it worth us? Uh, I'll heat it up in a minute. Prepping it. Oh, you want to do it? Yeah. <laughs> Bill gets a little protective. <laughs> well, he does it. Does it right? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, okay. And that's when I said, like, oh, do you want to help? What I really mean is, do you want to do it? Because <laughs> I, because I'm not going to do it right. <laughs> that's that's me including myself in the work that uh, you would be doing. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me look for. I have. A list of some. Actually, let's do this. Let me open it up to chat. So while Bill is setting up the next board, um, if uh, if you have questions where you want to ask uh, about like how Ryzen seven thousand or anything like that behaves in a particular way, this might be a good time to do it. So um, I'll I'll kind of start this, and then you guys can jump in with what you specialize in, so that people know which questions to ask. But you both worked on Expo, mm -hmm. and Bill, I, I guess you worked a lot on Expo. Yeah. Um, what do you need? Graphics card. Reference card? Graphics, Graphics. card. Uh, we had it. And then? I might have put it in here. Okay. Oh, in the uh, box. I can get you. So one. yeah, I worked on Expo um, with Grant Lee on our team, on the overclocking team, right. who actually authored the spec. So. And then Amit, you worked, what, what did you mostly work on? So I'm on the core design team, so designed uh, the clocking, power management, and um, it's like curve optimizer type stuff. And yeah, it, it's basically how, how to control the frequency and voltage of the part, and right? Then, and dealing with things like, you know, the, the chip has different voltage planes and different clock domains, and how how can you cross between them safely? Yeah, yeah, and that's what we we didn't get into this in the previous video together, but um, about uh. Like the Bill and Amit do a lot more than just play with liquid nitrogen all day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> work on engineering basically. So, um, okay, let me check the questions now. Uh, let's see, are we live? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. There's one about. Um, 
Here's here's one we could do. Yeah, we can talk about that. Wesley <laughs> Wesley Craig says, uh, "Hey, the uh, oh, was that the other fan? Yeah. Just <laughs> said, be quiet, fan. If the blades. It's survive not to be that, quiet. Yeah. If the blades survive that, they're pretty good. <laughs> 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 um, so this one says, "Can you speak about how you determine which CPUs are good overclocking candidates for good XOC candidates?" Uh, they know in Ryzen CPUs that have multiple chiplets, is it more difficult to work with if one CCD is of different or worse quality compared to monolithic CPUs? Yeah, so a lot, lot, lot to unpack there. Yeah. So one thing, okay, so for uh, trying to get to the highest performance, one of the things, and, and Bill and I worked this out when we were doing the Threadripper um, overclocking. Back in, overclocking back yeah. in LA, was what we found is what you want to find is is the part that can do the same frequency at the lowest voltage, mm. right? Because right. then that yeah, gives you the, the most. That gets you. Th it's it's more efficient, mm. and it gives you more headroom to raise voltage and and get to higher things. Now, that's true for like a, like an all core multi thread s sort of thing. Right? right now, having the chiplets, right? The complication that has is now you have those those interfaces, you know, between all the die, and so having one chiplet versus two is simpler, like, like the 7600 we have right here. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. Yep. Is, is less things that, that can get out of your control. There's less communication mm -hmm. on the substrate or within the chips, so. Yep. Yeah. So, so like, if you want to, if you want to get just, like, one core high frequency, you know, something like a one chiplet part, um, it is easier. Yeah. So, let's see. Um, is it something you can do at home? Yeah, I mean, this really is not much different than a house. The only the only real advantage we have is space, maybe, and like it does take a good amount of space. Yeah, the 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 the, the, the big hazard with LN2 is that it displaces the oxygen. Right. right? So you just want to make sure it's ventilated. And yeah. So yeah, we always do this stuff in in like a large studio. There's sort of AC circulating fans mm -hmm. come on and off, and so. Yeah, if you're working in like a really small room, like a, a small apartment or something, you don't have good ventilation, then you need to be careful and, and get ventilation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. like that's that's the answer to that. But but in terms of like practically, can you do it? Um, I guess the you can't really for in most places get liquid nitrogen delivered in a large tank to residential, but you can buy like a doer. So like the one we have behind us, it's maybe smaller, like 10 liters, 20 liters. Bring it to a local liquid nitrogen seller and ask them to fill it up and then you would buy uh, like liquid nitrogen pots. There's really only a few companies that make these. Um, they are expensive because it's a massive amount of copper yep. and they're probably and really low volume. <laughs> and you want to make sure you get it for the processor that you're trying to do. Right, yeah. yeah. Don't right. just buy like anything random off eBay or something unless it's for the CPU you're mm -hmm. working with. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, beyond that, it's kind of just... Um, you, you probably want to learn on stuff that is lower risk if you accidentally kill a part. But we were talking about this earlier, um, and I did see this question go by in chat earlier. How many parts do you think you've actually killed, like doing XOC? Yeah, we were, yeah, we were trying to go through that uh, yesterday, thinking about it. Like, honestly, it's the parts that we've actually killed. I could probably count on one hand. Right. Yeah. And, and that's in five years. Yeah. And we killed one in front of Lisa one time. <laughs> 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 it wasn't. That it wasn't our fault. Uh, yeah. I'm sure I don't want to say. I don't want to say the name of the person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we not. <laughs> we not only killed the part. We killed the board. There was smoke. instantly. Like There's it was. It was. It was. In front bad. of. Oh, and, and, and just to be clear, <laughs> this is. This is Lisa, the CEO, Lisa. Correct. <laughs> yeah. And her family was there yeah. Yeah. in the lab. Yeah. <laughs> and she didn't care. She was like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was that a, uh, was it just like a bad setting or was it like a short somewhere? Uh, uh, we we <laughs> applied uh, too high volt. He, oh, okay. he, yeah, he accidentally yeah. applied the full maximum voltage the VRM can deliver, oh, okay. and the part was like at room temperature, and yeah. the voltage was like two point six. Yeah. It's good. This is good, like to talk about though, because uh, it shows that you know there's a lot of protections in chips, and it is pretty. They they being the manufacturers make it pretty hard to kill stuff these days, but um, you can still do it. <laughs> so, like instant. Uh, yeah. Yes. So that's th I've typoed stuff like that, and I I've always caught it before applying in BIOS, but like I don't know, trying to type in like 1.55 or something, you miss the one, and it becomes mm -hmm. like 5.5, and it just maxes out mm -hmm. whatever the board will let yep. you, like yep. 2.0, whatever. Yep. 
Yeah, so uh, we actually have protections in you know in default mode to not let you do that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. But, so but when you're doing extreme overclocking, you know, we take off those protections. So that's another Therm trip is yeah. gone. Um, so you could you could easily cause a lot of damage by enabling LN2 mode mm -hmm. and ambient temperature conditions. So don't do that, please. Right. <laughs> right. Um, let's see. I'm looking through the chats, mostly to see what the reaction was to the story of, of killing parts in front of <laughs> Lisa <laughs> Sue. Oh, she'll appreciate this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it was long enough to go now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, someone uh, Jay Nero in in chat reminded me that we, I did in fact set a coupon code on the store on store.cameraaccess.net today for FKN Cold <laughs> for ten percent off anything on the store. Uh, if you want ten percent off on checkout, type in FKN Cold. Uh, we still can't define what FKN stands for. It's a uh, it's an upcoming technology, but yeah, um, nice. gotta keep it under wraps. Let's see. Okay, should we just put the new version on here, I guess? Yeah. All right, let's just do that. We're going to do a little housekeeping real quick. Okay, sure. And you, you, you want the Benchmate too? Yeah. If it downloaded. It did. It did. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, oh, the, the couple people were. Tell people were concerned for you when you clipped your fingers on the fan. Oh, it, it oh. actually um, it got me pretty good and scared me. <laughs> I, 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 I reacted. It's, yeah. It sounded pretty <laughs> nasty. Yeah. I'm fine. We'll clean it's, the it's, spray a off it's a hazard yeah, of this fine. job. It's yeah. okay. AMD is watching right now, like, yeah. uh. OSHA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then, we got a torch and yeah. LN2. It's okay. We're in, we're, in my, we're in my building, not yours. So. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Eddie. I'm looking through questions. So, there's a lot of questions about like future products, which they're not going to be able to answer. So I'm not going to bother asking them. Um, uh, let's see. Right. Like, unless you're ready to talk about the Ryzen like 9950X, <laughs> I'm going to announce it today. We are not <laughs> prepared to talk about. <laughs> the uh, did you put Benchmade on here? Yes. You did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is a good one for you. What is the AM5 record to overclock right now? A question from Taylor. What Do does that what's mean? All right, let's 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 define it, yeah. So uh, how about like frequency in Cinebench or something? Or, or Cinebench score, if you know that. I think it's just over 50,000. Um, There's going to be folks yeah. crossing 51,000, I think. I got wow. some screenshots last night of um, some folks that are successfully running uh, Cinebench, or like R20, R23 at 7 gig. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if any of that's been posted yet, but right. but it's happened for sure. Let's see. Um, and that's about, you know, that's 900 megahertz more than than what than what Zen 3 could do. Yeah, it looks yeah. like 50,800. Yeah. Wow, okay. that was running. Yeah, 51,000. 6750 all cores. Let's, let me give yeah. some perspective on those numbers. So that's Cinebench R23, right? Yep. Safe disk. So you said it was 50, 50,843. 5843. And so I'm going to go to Hardware Bot for Hardware Bot for people who don't know is is one of the few places where you can kind of upload scores and it you can do it for home overclocking with water also. I mean, you don't have to go crazy and get the the best frequency or score to upload there. Well, but um, right before we launched, uh, Amit and I did four, um, like, 16-core records for four different benchmarks on four different boards using a basic water cooler. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it is possible. Yeah. Right. Now, it might be a little too late now <laughs> of people posting LN2, but... Right. But it does have categories for different types of cooling. Yeah. Yeah. It has categories for cooling. It has categories for, like, core count. Mm -hmm. So if you're... You don't have to, like, go buy an $800 CPU or something just to compete if, if you only have like say uh i mean shoot if you have like a 3300x you, yeah. you can still post right so sure. um let's see i'm gonna pull up rankings so for perspective 50,843 is currently the world record for cinebench and that is uh at least on i'm assuming this number is accurate it says 6.75 yeah. gigahertz yeah. Mm -hmm. uh yeah, liquid I nitrogen of course and so if you're wondering, like, well, what does that actually mean? 
Uh, let's pull up another one. So there is, man, the entire front page is all 7950X until <laughs> Splave. <laughs> so Splave has the highest not AMD CPU score for 16 cores in hardware bot right now. And that is a 12900KS, so 5843 minus like 4421 divided by 4421. That's like a 26% increase uh, between the, what, what rank is he? Between 15th and 1st. Mm -hmm. It's like 25, 26% of range there, which is actually like that's kind of tight together s for that many rankings. Um, yeah, it has more to do with the, with the chip, I think. Yeah. All, all the ones above it are 7950s, so, so they're going to be similar. Right, right. Um, okay, so you got this booted and yeah, got Benchmate. So we're not going to be doing 50,000 with right, this right, particular right. CPU, <laughs> but. Yeah, well, this is a 7600. Right? That's, that's mm -hmm. right, yeah. So, so this, this score is going to be lower, but the. Uh, you're going to be able to push potentially higher frequency just because it's behaving better, maybe. Right. So. Yeah. And then we can play around. Yeah, so this exact CPU, like I said, in our debug board, um, I was running well over 7 gig. So um, we'll see. This BIOS on the ASUS is a little bit different than, than what I was running uh, in the lab. So let me pull up a, uh, let me pull up some 7600 or some 6-core. Uh, yeah, I just looked at that. It's... Uh, 21,500 at 6.8 gig. Six p okay, so yeah. 6.88, yeah, 21K is the top score on a hardware bot, and that is for a six core, which we're not necessarily shooting for, like, world record number one, but mm -hmm. it just gives you an idea for the top of the range. Um, so where was it at? That is 21.5K. Okay. If I'm in the right section, anyway. Yeah, yeah you are. Yeah, okay. So there is a 7600 on there. Yeah, so currently the highest 7600 on here was running at 6.3 gigahertz. Hmm. Okay. Do you think you can beat that? I think, well, I don't know. Um, that should be easy. Uh, <laughs> but that's what, I thought, with last that's word. what yeah. I thought with my other board, too. I've learned <laughs> to stop <laughs> saying that so much. <laughs> okay. So, so that was 55. I'm just going to bump it up to 6. So we're trying to displace the top 7600X. At minus 50, is that? Yeah, it'll, it'll, we can set it. 18K. Um, so we'll start, we'll cool down a little more, I guess. Um, so we're like at negative 53. Do you know this particular overclocker, or is that uh, sort of just. I don't know him or her. So rank number 10 is a user named Zippy Tech who has a 6.3 gigahertz 7600X at 17,893 in Cinebench. R23, which is what this is. Mm -hmm. Trying to calculate what we would need to do to get to the top. It's, it's Can you run those numbers in your head? It's, yeah, it's pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> I just see all the numbers flying around there right now. Uh, let's uh, check on the chat. All right, we're negative 90. So we basically turned this thing on at about room temperature, and we made it to negative 100, and so we'll see if we can actually do full pot Are you OC on one boot. That would be cool. Is it a golden sample? I mean, I don't... So like he was kind of talking about earlier, um, you know, this only has one CCD, uh -huh. so it only has the one GMI link going through the package itself. So um, that's a lot less to, do, to go wrong yeah. and a lot less to tune if you have to start messing with those voltages. So, okay, so it did something. Where are these rankings that you're talking about? Question from chat. Uh, so these are on hardware bot. It is oh, I mean, two probably. Uh, H HWBOT, HWBOT.org is the website. It's kind of like a repository of, um, of scores for people. And like I was saying earlier, uh, we don't have any sponsorship or anything with them but it's it's a good website if you want to kind of get into it and play around with water overclocking maybe you know give yourself some scores to chase so you uh you have some milestones and markers you want to hit 3d mark is another really really common one if you're doing um especially gpu stuff yeah on the front page they list like the top records of the day or whatever so you can kind of see what's popular right. um, day to day 
And it's got a bit of a scene. Hardware has a bit of a scene for older hardware too. Mm -hmm. So they occasionally do like competitions for mm -hmm. older stuff. Bro, you guys are going to run out of oxygen in the room. Uh -huh. We're good here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> we are. I've okay. done much sketchier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there none? Someone says, "Why is there no 7700 in hardware bot?" Is there not a? Uh, there has to be some. I'd be surprised, but for what? Yeah, maybe. That would be a good one for you to go, go get when you get back to the <laughs> lab. <laughs> so that'd be under eight core CPU. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, maybe it's too new. Oh, there's some in here. But they're not very high up yet. Yeah, it looks like they didn't do LN2. Yeah, it doesn't say LN2. It's 5.5 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. It's probably all in one. Or so there's an opening for you to go get, yeah. get an easy <laughs> <laughs> score. Are they signing anything? No. We're, well, we do have three things. We could probably do that while the bench is getting situated. Yeah. Uh, we're not doing like signing mouse pads and mats. They, they <laughs> Thank the guys, you, Steve. <laughs> the guys will have to get on a plane at some point. So, um, Amit, let's. Uh, so while Bill's getting this set yep. up, let's look at these. So, here's the here's the sort of spoiler for later in the year for you all to look out for. We've collected a lot of uh, press kits over the years from all kinds of different companies like AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, everybody. And one of the things I've been wanting to do for a long time is put together a charity auction kit of a lot of the press stuff that like AMD's given us or NVIDIA's given us. And the AMD one's getting to be a pretty good haul right now. Like there's some cool stuff in there. So that'll be a charity auction closer to like that of December sometime. And you guys brought these along that we'll include in there. Uh, so it'll be a cool opportunity for people to try and you know get something pretty unique. Do you want to walk? You want to show off the shirt? Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is this is the one we made for Raphael, and you know, one of the things we thought when we got the new heat spreader, you know, w what does it look like? Right. And so, you know, one of the guys on our team was like turtles. Oh <laughs> so yeah. Okay. <laughs> so kind of looks like a turtle shell. So. Uh, that's the front, and yeah, you got the back there. Yeah. So, so we kind of went with that, and we put in the the blowtorch and the. And yeah. The so, so we'll yeah. s we'll uh, sign these during the stream here, and that's not going to go out like today or anything, but I uh, will announce it in, in a hardware news video, and um, you know, someone will be able to grab them in like a charity auction. Uh, this one, what's the story with this shirt? Okay, so this is this is uh, this is kind of a rare one. So this okay. is one we made for for Zen three. Uh, the was that the 5000 series? Yeah. Yeah. So Cerberus was our internal uh, code name for the core, kind of like, you know, it was Zen yeah. and Valhalla. Yeah, yeah, and, right. And Cer Cerberus was, was Zen 3. And so um, this is the overclocking shirt we made, limited edition. You know. Show them the sleeve. <laughs> AMD here, and here it says. AMD, yes. <laughs> AMD, yes. Where is, let me grab a. Uh, and what, what's pad. it say on the back? Sending the competition to Hades. So that's uh, Cerberus is a dog of the underworld, and which is actually come in very valuable in, in trivia lately. So uh, it comes up a lot. So now I know what Cerberus means. What All is right. that? Oh, the pen. Paint pen. Yeah. Where should we sign these while Bill's uh, setting up here? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let's do like on. Like normal people do like. Like on the sleeve or something? Yeah, on the sleeve or the back. Oh, yeah. If it's worn. Uh, or on the front, if it's maybe going to end up framed. Let's do the front for this one. Okay. So, this, like I said, this will go up later in the year. Is we'll put some cool um, press day stuff. They, The press kits, the companies only make like sometimes like 100 of them. Because just for the for the media, so so they're pretty cool, and I think you know it'll raise some some good money and get people in the audience who. I mean, for me, like the press kits aren't really that special because we it's just we get them all the time, and honestly, we're not really s supposed to, in my view, like kind of care about them too much because as reviewers. Mm -hmm. But for people in the audience who are like big fans of this stuff, it'd be pretty cool on a on a shelf or something. 
a little hard if you kind of hold it. And we'll get Bill's once he's set up. So right now, Bill is heating up the um, 750X bench. And Bill, are you going to remount it or are you just going to try it? I'm going to, yeah, I'll, I'll be messing with it off and on while I try to keep this one alive as well. Yeah. So, um, so I forgot a couple of settings. Um, one of the things that we noticed was um, PCI um, Gen 2 kind of seems to be good for LN2. We don't know for sure, but um, but we but seem to be using a DGP. losing the graphics. Yeah, so um, that that seems to help with that. So, and then the other thing we talked about earlier was. Um, how GMI has been optimized and how that's helped for, uh, you know, you at home run mission mode on air or water to run a faster F-clock, but also for us to be able to run faster F-clock on, on liquid nitrogen. So memory has kind of been the new um, challenge for liquid nitrogen, I would say. Right. So, so if you kind of, wherever you want to sign, just hold the fabric kind of, yeah. Yeah, um, so I had a, saw a question that just came through in the chat about uh, liquid helium versus liquid nitrogen and what it's like, the differences to work with. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> the advantage of liquid helium is that it's much colder. So liquid nitrogen, you can get down to one, minus 196. Right. Liquid helium, you can get down to 4 Kelvin, which right. is you know, much colder. But the, there are several disadvantages. One is it's super expensive. Minus 270 if we use the same scale Celsius. Minus yeah. 270. So it's an extra minus 100 degrees almost. Yeah, and like we said, like if it's, you know, you go uh, 100 megahertz for 10, you know, t for every 10 C, that's another gigahertz you can get. Right. If you can get that cold. The problem is the cost, cost is about 200x, I would say. <laughs> versus like like a money cost, yeah, right? Like yeah, like money okay. cost. That's it's also, one. it's helium, like... It, it's helium, so it, there's environmental, yeah. you know, there's like, is it in short supply? Do you really want to be using it for that? Right. right? It's harder to handle from what the I understand. La the last thing is, you need special equipment, because liquid nitrogen, it'll be in the pot in liquid form. The liquid helium, without... <laughs> I was going to kill his mic, but... <laughs> oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I'll remember that next time. Yeah. <laughs> liquid helium, without uh, a special apparatus, it'll evaporate before it even gets in the pot. You can't even yeah, pour it out of a dewer. Um, it'll turn to vapor as soon as it touches the air. Yeah. It's, it's okay. wild, yeah. yeah. So you use a siphon hose to get it from the dewer into the uh, pot or from the tank into the, the dewer, so. Uh, we're gonna sign this one as well for that future charity auction. How's setup going? Is that bootable now? I think someone should sign it in the, in, in the thermos. In the thermos? Yeah. Yeah, you should do that, Bill. Booting? Oh yeah, that's that's yeah. good. Now, this is the real. Uh, I was talking with other overclockers about like what what really separates like a great overclocker from someone who you know struggles with it more. And the answer I got was patience, which I think is a pretty <laughs> good answer. Yeah, that is that was very true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like Bill was saying, he's got notebooks full of, you know what frequency he got right. going like five millivolts at a time to try and just yeah. get things to work. Yeah. What temperature he got to, so it can be it can be tedious. Yeah, so um uh, Did you put it in Gen 2 already, Bill? I did. Okay. Uh, um, I have PCA you can Gen 2. Onboard graphics to disable it. Um, okay. I've noticed it was alive for some reason. Okay. And I think that um, that could be part of the problem. I think graphics off. Um, we need to check it in Windows. Okay. Yeah. Just looking to see if there's anything else. Um, did you? And then we have a uh, control disabled. <laughs> someone, I guess someone must have asked about liquid oxygen in the chat. <laughs> uh, liquid oxygen is incredibly explosive. <laughs> <laughs> it would. Uh, I'm not sure where the. You so don't use liquid oxygen for overclocking. Yeah. So the thing about it is, though, um, 
when you have, okay, so we talked about earlier how we, yeah. we cap these to keep the water out, but if also what'll happen is oxygen will accumulate in the liquid nitrogen and become a solution. Mm. The liquid nitrogen boils off first, so what could happen is if you had open container all day, lic oxygen could dissolve into mm. it, and then you'll be left when the nitrogen um, preferentially boils away, there will still be liquid oxygen left in your container. Okay, yeah. So um, it becomes a fireball potentially. Could um, yeah. we've um, maybe pur purposely made it before? Um, you can force air into a cup yeah. and let it, and then keep topping it up with LN2, and then the oxygen content will. Don't do this at home. Yeah, I it'll like it'll literally. This is do, do, not, you, do, not, yeah, do not. Yeah. Do not. Do not. Let's see. Uh, the, I feel like the materials questions in chat, I've never seen so many questions about material science before. <laughs> and none of us here, I don't think, are material scientists. No. no. So, uh, OK. Uh, someone's saying, have you ever hit 7.2 on gigahertz on any of these chips? This one. That one? Yeah. 7600X? Yes, okay. This exact chip, yeah. Yes. 7, yeah, 725. 725, wow. Yeah. We have a CPU Z validation for it. Even. I got a picture of seven, but I, we were giddy on Teams and, <laughs> and doing, and so Teams was running, so I couldn't get a good picture of it. Right. So right, right. seven's pretty crazy. Seven two's yeah. crazy. Yeah. What was the highest you saw on like a like five thousand series that you guys did? Six. Six. Yeah. Very really uh, six. Like a, a very, very large difference. Yeah. Yeah. The mic going in on that. I guess if you end up using the um, hair dryer, if you hit oh. the mute kill switch on the transmitter, okay. just remember to unmute it when you're done. Sure. <laughs> oh, is there like a like an interference every now and then? I wouldn't say it's interference, but okay, it's just like a bad. It might be mine. I took the worst cable because I figured no. my audio is the least important today. So. <laughs> Uh, we, we need you, Steve. Mm, <laughs> not for this, you don't. <laughs> uh, we already took this question, the how many chips have you killed? They're saying, like, could basically count at one hand in the last five years. Um, yeah, basically massive screw up. Yeah. Let's see. Let me check on the... We're not doing all the super chats today. I'm checking them occasionally, but... Uh, let's see. I'm just looking up some of the chats. What CPU is this? Uh, this one is a 7600X. And liquid helium OC when? I have no plans to do any <laughs> liquid helium work. <laughs> and if I ever did, it would probably be at like a trade show where a company's got it all set up already. Although they've pretty much stopped doing that. I mean, it is limited supply. So I haven't seen liquid helium in a long time. Yeah, I remember Gigabyte doing it years and years ago. Some kind of, they set some kind of records. Yeah. I'd say the, you know, we're still producing helium from mainly from natural gas wells. Mm. Um, there was a controversy, though, because we, uh, the United States government liquidated um, the helium reserve that oh, we had, okay. and that caused a lot of the shortage talk a few years back. Right. Yeah, because I think last time I saw it show up was probably a Computex event, which uh, would, uh, G School does a lot of those OC competitions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are fun. Yeah. Uh, what are the answers to AMD's security questions? I don't think we can go over those today, but we'll talk about that uh, afterwards. And <laughs> AMD is just one person, actually, <laughs> and it has one account for everything, and it all uses the same security questions. <laughs> uh, let's see. So what, what's your process, um, like, while you're working on this right now? Yep. What is it you're trying to do actively? What's the current goal? So <laughs> right now we're just trying to get it to boot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right now it's getting stuck right as it goes into OS. Right, mode. right. So... Um, what we're doing is we're going through, uh, first thing is figure out what, wh why it's failing. Right. Um, so how do you uh, walk me through like the troubleshooting you do when you're trying to identify that? Sure. So the first thing is looking at the postcodes, right? So the postcodes will show you uh, how far it's getting. 
Um, and we can get a shot of those too. Sure. Yeah, right now it's on 15, which is memory training. Um, so, Bill, you've benched this board before? Yeah, this exact yeah. setup. Yeah. So 15 is so memory training. Yep. It's getting past that. It's on 42. So memory training, uh, basically when whenever you're, you're like booting a system the first time or something like that, some of that initial setup that it's doing is training the memory, which is going through, and if you have like auto timings or something, uh, or new, it's a new kit or new build, it'll try and determine what the timings should be when you're booting it. So that's the training process. That's what that terminology means. Yeah, it's, like it's getting past all that fine. And then what's happening is it, it gets to the point where you can either go into BIOS or go into OS. Right. right. And right, and that's where it's getting stuck. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go into BIOS, and I'm going to see, um, does it see the drive? Oh, okay, right. yeah. And does that look, look healthy? Um, what are the other like common postcodes you see that, that tell you something useful? I mean, in this scenario. Um, so we have <laughs> we have postcodes. I'm trying to remember if if the numbers change. Yeah. A common one was was zero seven. Uh -huh. That was basically right when we we call it x eighty six release. It's when okay. So when we start to run x eighty six code on the cores, and that typically pointed to a GMI problem. Oh, okay. Because okay. that was kind of mm -hmm. the first time that we needed. The IOD to talk to the CCD, right? right. You know, uh, to run yeah, yeah. Up to that point, everything's kind of okay. running independently, right. right? And when you start running x86 code, then the system has to has to behave coherently, mm. and so that was that was a common postcode for that, and that's where we we recommended lowering f clock, you know, and messing with the GMI voltages, right, to yeah. get past that sort of thing. Um, this one, like, it's getting into BIOS fine. I'm trying to see in the boot menu. So. It's on. So you're using right. that DMI, that the adding card bill for the M.2. Is that what you're using before? This one. Yeah. So that's the OS drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. This one. It's, yeah, that's it. You're good. So it's it's seeing it, but it's when fine. I when I go to manually boot it, uh, see Windows is Windows is being uh, fussy now. Right. See when you see this sort of thing. I'm just showing the camera. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> This uh, automatic repair. Yeah, this is normally what we see is a is a memory problem. Oh, okay, right, so, so that's good to know too. Yeah, yeah typically this is, yeah, memory's not acting right. So it, you know, when it's reading the disk, it thinks that there's some problems, but really the problems are in memory. Okay, so okay. okay. Uh, typically that's what that means. So let me see if we. So can this is is was this the reactor pot? Is that what this one is? Uh, that's the reactor. Yeah. That's the reactor. It's, so it's uh, based on a reactor 2.1 design, but like I said. If you look at the back, um, or the like the bottom side, that's exactly the same size as a thread ripper. So the dimensions right. were stretched a little bit, and it makes it tricky to mount on an AM4 board. Um, but it works uh, really great. So it's my favorite one by far. So heavy. <laughs> <laughs> my my mic wasn't on that whole time. So uh, <laughs> you were talking next to me, so probably get around yeah. picked up. Okay, so we got the 7950X is currently in. In, in the shop. Surgery, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the pit stop. <laughs> but Bill moves fast, so it's already getting uh Yeah, I just need some alcohol, pushed. fresh towel, and then I'm going to mount it back up. And, uh... Mm. Yes. Did you load Expo? No. There's load. If I did, it might have just been to load the timings. Uh, I was asking, yeah, if he, if he loaded Expo timings or not. Sometimes we see, like at those higher sp speeds, it it actually gives more cycles, uh, right? okay. and so that's how it's gonna make things easier, even, uh, at, even at uh, lower frequencies. Um, I'm gonna try something crazy. I'm actually going to increase the DDR speed. Sometimes what we see is that they're actually more stable. Yeah, I don't know if this is true for DDR, but I know for um, I'm trying to remember the name of it for video memory, there was. Um, what is it called? There's something like where, as you're increasing the offset of the memory on the GPU, mm -hmm. it lands in like this black hole where it's like really bad performance. And then if you g you get through to the other side of it, so if you're at like say plus 840 to plus um, 900, you might have really bad performance, but plus 820 is better than any of those ranges. 
And I think it has to do with memory errors that are kind of happening silently in the background. I'm not really sure the, how okay. it works exactly, but it's, it's almost it's counterintuitive because, like, say you hit plus 820 offset, it's good. You hit plus 840, it runs, but it's terrible performance. The inclination is, okay, that's my limit. I'll bring it down. Nice. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. But, but, the, uh, but in, with the GPU stuff, you might then go to, like, plus 900, and suddenly you're good again. So... Um, I forget what that's called. Oh, straps. Uh, Kingpin calls it like memory straps or something. Yeah, we we had. I think we had a, a memory hole like that on the first Zen, like mm. when it first came out. Like there was a yeah, there was a, a, a range. range. A yeah. range we had it on hit. Raven Ridge and Picasso to our first APUs. Yeah, and we had a frequency black hole, and it's not intuitive, like you were saying, because you you hit a wall and it's not working, but if you skip that 200 megahertz band or and then went higher then it works fine all of a sudden mm -hmm. but if you hit that wall and it's not working why would you think you can go higher right most people bring yeah. it back down yep. yeah. yeah so I, that's what i was trying there uh i'm not sure that any of us is qualified to answer this question but i suppose we're being asked because there's liquid nitrogen here what's the temperature of a wormhole or a black hole uh, I have no idea. <laughs> well, depends. <laughs> there you go. Bill knows. <laughs> <It depends. laughs> is there a accretion disk? Right. <laughs> it might be very hot. Is, is it rotating? <laughs> <laughs> non rotating. I don't know if any of this is is actual science or if he's just saying words. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, got some uh, comments. Oh, there you go. Andrew getting getting praise. Praise for the camera operator, Andrew, in chat. Always appreciated. Uh, just comments about how much copper there is here, which is also true. Let's see. Okay, I'm, what I'm trying now, so we were running... Um, Fixed frequency in BIOS, but I'm going back. I'm going back to auto. To see if that makes a difference. Is this a? I don't know if that's like an AMD campus. Uh, Foco, yeah, Fort Collins, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's Fort Collins in the house. Yeah, Foco. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Fort Collins. <laughs> you can see me through the mist. <laughs> uh, Looking at chats to see if anyone has a question you want to pitch about Ryzen, especially like as it to, as it relates to BIOS tuning, overclocking, memory, anything like that. Why are there questions like this? What's the boiling temperature in space? The boiling temperature of what? <laughs> what space. is the boiling temperature in space? <laughs> 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 we've somehow, somehow, Bill, now there's a, uh, I, I guess we've established you as an astrophysicist. Okay. <laughs> so okay. if anyone's right. looking for an astrophysicist, uh, Bill can do some contracting work on the side. Well, I can out. tell you, liquid nitrogen will boil at a lower temperature in space. I don't know what. It so would you are be. an astrophysicist. Well, it's a lower <laughs> pressure, right? So the temp the boiling temperature will go down, right? All, all, all I'm hearing is uh, is denial that he is in fact <laughs> a space science man. I am not getting paid enough, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we may have to call my dad. He is an astrophysicist. Oh, is he actually? So yes. <laughs> <laughs> he can answer that. <laughs> turn it into a different kind of stream Q and A and do <laughs> call, astrophysics. Call on its dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lifeline. Yeah. Uh, what is a? S I'll, I'll kind of take. I'll start this question. If one of you wants to jump in while you're setting up, go for it. Uh, question is: What is a safe max voltage for casual overclocking with an AIO or a large air coil like a D15? So we get this question a lot. Um, First part of that is it changes entirely based on the CPU. Second part of that is if you're, say, idle versus load, mm, yes. it's going to behave differently. So if you're at, like, 1.4 idle, it'll, it'll affect the chip differently than if you're at 1.4 under a full load because it's a, it's a current and voltage relationship. Um, second part of that, so it also depends on what voltage you're talking about. It's so like V-Core versus VSOC, 
I guess VDD MISC now. Um, historically, my understanding has been that VSOC you have to be a little more careful with how high you push it, but I don't know if that's... Yeah, that's true, because the SOC uh, affects the IO die. Um, and so, so it's just, it's not really designed with a lot of the overclocking uh, headroom that we right. have on the CPU die. And mm -hmm. so I know in, in the past, it's, I mean, different versions of Zen or Intel CPUs and things, it's been like 1.1, 1.2 is kind of the max recommended range. Um, but uh, I save voltages... I, I am never able to give a hard answer in chat. I'm always like, oh, I don't know, like if it's like an Intel chip I'm familiar with, like say the 7700K from ages back, we might throw out a number like 1.4, and you're like, that's it will be fine with basically everything. Maybe it could go higher, but I mean, I mean honestly, like what what we try to move to is is the more managed overclocking, mm. right? And so there, the 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 PM firmware will keep you in the safe ranges, safe temperatures, uh, safe voltages. Right. Swap it so back. Uh, I, I took out one demo. So we'll, we'll try that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, doesn't look like it worked. Uh, oh, oh no, it's doing the training. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you have this reassembled, I guess. Good to go. Nice. Yeah, I found the problem. I messed up. Uh, what oh. was it? Yeah. Well, bad uh, mount. Do explain uh, a bit. Yeah. 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 It was just it was a bad mount. So um, there was unequal pressure. Um, I use these um, foam rubber gaskets, but it can be tricky, especially with this this larger pot. So I basically just removed that gasket. So, but it was like less than a millimeter is all that it took. Wow. Like you found yeah. with your mount, right? Yeah. So, so it, was it tilted to one corner? Or yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And so, I and you can tell by the way when I pulled it off, I could tell by the imprint of the thermal. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what you said you saw. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. thing I saw, and then it also like uh, depending on how on there the the cooler is, you feel like different resistance as you're pulling it up because the paste doesn't really like, yep. oh, it's not there's stuck. not that suction uh, with the paste. Yeah. And so, um, but I mean, uh, there's not really like oh, a lot you can do for figuring out if it's a bad mount before you just. You just have to take it apart and see, yeah. Yeah, so. It doesn't happen that often, but. I feel like normally, well, for me it happens very often. So. I'm new, <laughs> <But> I, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you for that burn, I appreciate it. <laughs> Unintentional oh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, for me, that's like 50% of the but time. But you have a screwed up yeah. mount, look at this. Yeah, let's, let's Thanks, blame. Thanks, Joe. Let's blame Joe <laughs> Thanks, again. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> I got you I am, sorted now. I'm completely incapable of, of purchasing another cap nut here, so uh, <laughs> it is entirely <laughs> Joe's fault. <laughs> I have no way to buy hardware. <laughs> yeah, so that did it, but I just had to take out that near near dim. Okay. So, um, so I say let's. Okay, let's see what we can do what here. We can do yeah, and then yeah. we can go back to this because I think um, this we can go a lot faster now. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've got a really good. Yeah, feeling that's about a good it. place to be in. Nice. Okay. All right. So all right. So I'm. Uh, um, just clear away. We had a, uh, where was it? Oh, someone said, uh, what site has updated leaderboards for this? So the one we've been mentioning is HardwareBot has that uh, for like Cinebench and CPUZ, things like that. Okay. Right. So everything else is the same. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went back to uh, check memory speed. I think I went back. There's to still questions about material science. <laughs> More? I don't know the answers to any of these. Where did, where did we become material scientists in the stream? What about argon? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> I don't know anything about argon. <laughs> no. I don't. Um, liquid nitrogen is colder, is my understanding. Uh, yeah. Andrew, do we have a periodic table? Argon would be safe. Yeah. <laughs> we can start pointing to the Let's draw a periodic table <laughs> on the whiteboard. <laughs> and nitrogen, oxygen, <laughs> indium. Uh, what about RDNA 3 APU with 3 dB cache? So, I don't think we're really talking about like potential products in the future or or completely unlikely products in the future either. So, uh, let's see. Are the Ryzen shirts in the store? That's a good question. The OC shirts? No, they're not. No, I wish no, they yeah. were. So that makes them super limited. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah, we don't sell them. Do, yeah. do, do the people want them? Should we have them in the store? I don't know. Yeah, post the uh, post comments in chat, and then uh, yeah, we always thought it was pretty niche, right? Yeah. So I mean, do you have? Oh, you don't have them on today, but huh. there's the they have the other shirts with like the the torch and the Allen two pot. Yeah. That one's oh, this really one. Cool. Yeah. This one's got sort on of the back. On oh, is back. that? Yeah. yeah. But we were wearing that the shirt you're talking about at the last uh, stream, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. That is my favorite one, I think. Yeah. 
That one we have not distributed widely. Yeah. I do like yeah. that one. Uh, can we talk about different voltages? We have been kind of covering them. Um, I think once Bill gets this bench running again, or on the other one, we'll be able to go over some of what he's doing while he's doing it. Mm. Um, since we've been kind of explaining a lot of this stuff so over we time have now. The millivolt offset still set? Did you mess with that? I didn't change it. Okay. So I'm okay, so that means we're at one five. Okay. And is this the new rising master? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're at negative ninety. Okay, so um, I think it's mostly superstition, but we'd like to kind of walk the frequency up. Um, it really does seem to help somehow. So I've noticed that as well. And same thing. I don't know <sighs> if it's superstition or not. No, I don't think it is. It's like like. We, just we were saying we do a lot of again. calibration, hmm. and so what we've seen is that if you calibrate at one temperature and then and then change, you can actually get out of right uh, out of the operating range. So. Do you need a you need a different video card? No, it's not it's not that. Um, I think it is because um, the system is still alive right now. Uh -huh. I think graphics off is enabled and it's um, wreaking havoc. So oh, okay. what we could do, um, I can try. Um, to change one more setting to get rid of that, and then and then we'll see if we can get full pot real quick, and and if we can try for seven gig, and if that doesn't work out, I'll probably just switch back to the ASRock, mm -hmm. and uh, we should be able to, you know, get over six five I think with that one. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be uh, uh, better than I've been able to do. I got stuck <laughs> at six two that day, six three almost on the one test, but I'm really excited to. Um, to, I don't know if it's out here right now, but to uh, test out with the new mounting hardware <laughs> for the on two pods. <laughs> this is the only pod I have that fits the current socket uh, from AMD. So okay. um, it's it's behaves pretty well when I can get the mount right, though. Yeah, I'd like to see you try with four knots, man. That would be yeah. Good. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice to actually have it secured on all sides and not <laughs> not like. Like that, or you're like yeah. one millimeter. Yeah, because you do you do crank them down. I mean, there's a fair amount of force, yeah. even, even with the weight. So. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, plus the springs on there kind of helps uh, determine how much you should secure it too. Okay. Are you doing the registry changes? Yeah. Um, should we it talk it about the registry secrets? It's it's not really. It's well, not a secret. Yeah, we we, yeah. we it's had just not published. It's right. We had the setting on our APUs, and um, and we're trying to get it moved over here as well. So, yeah, basically, the registry passes information to uh, the graphics drivers, uh -huh. right? and it's, it's telling the graphics driver what to do for different power management modes. Oh, okay, yeah. It's, it's kind of similar to what we talked about with C states. Yeah, right? there's similar power management in the GPU. Yeah, you try to get rid of all the. All the stuff that improves power efficiency when you're doing this. <laughs> yes. What was, um, so for wattage, what's kind of the range you're seeing when you're on um, it, when you're like uh, really driving the clocks on, say, like a 750X or something? Yeah, so I think well, when we get close to like the world record, you know, the 48,000, 50,000 range in Cinebench, at the wall, we saw about, I think, um, like 450 watts. Okay, is, is the most we've seen, and that's at the wall. That's at the wall. So that's yeah. the that's the total system. Yeah, yep. not just the all CPU. the the world record runs are like 375 watts on LN2, kind of average. That's it. Yeah, and then but there's some momentary peaks at, at 450 watts, like I'm at saying. Oh, but okay. The average power, if you if you watch it, is like closer to 375 for all the LN2 stuff that we did. Yeah. So that's like at 6.4, 6.5. And oh, what's oh, interesting wow. too yeah. is that's pretty close. That's pretty close to what the power was on the water cooled records that I did yeah. as well. Because yeah. the LN2, the temperature raises the efficiency of the silicon so much that the voltage requirements yeah. go down and power overall goes down, you know, for a given frequency. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of like all these have been about around one five volts, that kind of range. Like we haven't got you know, the curve really really levels yeah. off. So to get that last few megahertz, you need a lot more voltage. And oh we yeah, the, push the, that yet. the power numbers are pretty good though for XOC type stuff because I've definitely, I like we've run systems with um, in the 
uh, competition I did with like me, Jay, and Vince, we had systems where we were running two separate power supplies because yeah. you know for GPU and CPU because yeah. um, yeah. you're starting to pull too much. Absolutely. So. Especially with like transient spikes on GPUs and things where you don't, you know, you, don't, you might get like a hundred microsecond like two X or something. Yeah. <laughs> like out of nowhere. We, we typically like to use one circuit for the system. So yeah, like that's <laughs> ideal, right? Like it's easier. I mean, getting multi power supply is kind of a pain too, because um, yeah, you got to do that cross uh -huh. uh, cross connection to the. And if you mess it up, like it can be bad. So. Okay, it went into recovery for some reason, so I'm going to swap the board now, okay, I think. Okay, okay, um, let's do Because that just makes, well, yep. here, it's booting now all of a sudden. Um, I'll check one thing, because it was doing something funny with the, the GPU. GPU. Yeah, you said the system was still up. It, it, um, th it's saying the GPU wasn't even here. I like this, uh, this comment, so back to the That's shirts, good. people asking for we'll OC team shirt availability. There's one from Counter. I'm one crazy cow who says, "Lisa, we want the T-shirts in the AMD store. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send it all the way to the top, right, right up to the That's top right. of the chain. <laughs> <laughs> like, she doesn't have anything better to worry about right now. <laughs> so about those T-shirts, <laughs> uh, when can we get them on the store? No, 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 no. They they asked for it on the internet. <laughs> yeah, the internet wants it. Yeah. <laughs> the energy bill will bankrupt the GN. <laughs> Surprisingly, like. I mean, the the power is, I don't know, for our editing systems, they probably draw more power actively. But you're also, to be fair, you're like working on one component right now. So, um, but the editing machines, I don't know, when they're under full load, they're probably like 500, 600 watts or something. Okay. But that's the GPU the, active. GPU rendering. Yeah, yeah the yeah. GPU's running. Sure, yeah, so sure. And those, those we have like, a, one of them's Threadripper, one of them's a Alder Lake CPU, and um, it's really the GPU that's, Pulling all the power, you know, <laughs> any yeah. of those scenarios, and, and that's the thing. Like in your use case, right? You want to get done as soon as possible. That's you. Right? Yeah. You probably money. don't go to the high efficiency part of the curve. Right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, it's a good question. Well, you think but about like <laughs> the cost per kilowatt hour here is pretty low. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like ten cents or something. So, um, yeah, you know, you're looking at like nope. not working. Okay. Yeah, just um, I think it got it's just being cranky. Um, yeah. Yeah, swap boards. Yeah. Yeah, so for us, it's just like it's better to, if I can get it rendered a little bit faster so I can go home and sleep sooner. You that's know, that's like worth it. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. willing to exchange <laughs> the few pennies yes. for that, yeah. yeah. You know, that's the same thing we do with benching. Yeah. Right. right. Uh, okay, we have, we have an answer oh, to no. the earlier question of what is the temperature of a black hole. I have no idea if this is accurate, so I'm going to spread misinformation on the internet now, willingly, if it's not. It <laughs> says, the inside of a black hole is a millionth degree above absolute zero. The outside is in the hundreds of millions. If it's a quasar. Base, base clock of 250 hertz and boost of 125 kilohertz. <laughs> not sure if it's unlocked for OC. <laughs> so there's the numbers. <laughs> okay. I actually didn't read that part <laughs> before I got to it. <laughs> so it didn't get better over time. I was like, oh, I don't know. That sounds accurate. Sure, why not? Oh, it's got frequency now. <laughs> Maybe not real. <laughs> uh, Hashtag Rip J. Not right now, but I am learning the things I'll need for, <laughs> for when we get into the next competition. <laughs> um, uh, do, you, do you want me to heat up the gene? Uh, sure. Kay. That would not be a bad idea. I watch that mic. Yeah, I turned. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm looking through questions right now. 10 cents per kilowatt hour, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, let's see. Steve, have you heard anything about EBGA X670? My understanding is they're not currently doing an AM5 board. Uh, but when I learned that, I was like, really? P please do an AM5 board. Because <laughs> the X570 Dark was pretty cool. Uh, Looking through questions. Let's see. What is the ideal frequency for RAM? Oh, this one we can. This one we can do. 
Uh, Arthur Archer previously asked, what is the ideal frequency for RAM with the 7900X to 7950X for gaming? Is fast or better? How much is too much? There, there is a getting to too much area, and I think that's mostly to do with stability. Well, okay, so uh, um, we made, you know, on Zen 1, or on Zen 3, you wanted to have, you know, F clock, U clock, MEM clock, mm -hmm. and a one to one to one ratio. Right. Okay, so like if you were running 3600 memory, and that'd be 1800 megahertz U clock and F clock, right? So um, moving to AM5 with DDR5 and the radically different, you know, memory speeds that, that we have now, mm. we optimized uh, the fabric so that you'd no longer need to worry about having it in a one to one. And we talked right. about, you can pretty much for the most part leave that in auto. Auto to one to one now. Um, yeah, and then run, uh, now the main thing is you want U clock and MEM clock to be one to one mm. um, instead of two to one. So, um, so that, that'll, that's that'll dictate thing. part of the the settings you end up using. And, and just run F clock as fast as you can. Um, 2000, we, I plotted it out myself uh, running the DDR6000 sweet spot mm. memory and um, F clock 2000 gave the best balance of latency in the end where going to 2200 was stable on all of my systems, but it it was worth mm, around one nanosecond or less of, of memory latency. Right, so, and um, you also just dropped the other um, the other answer to this question of like sort of what is the ideal frequency? DDR5 6000 sounds like kind of where you guys are. I think AMD officially wrote like a thing that was like this is the sweet spot. Yeah, or whatever, so. yeah. yeah um, yeah, yeah, right. We yeah. sent uh, the reviewers guards out with that, and right. um, it's because the uh, DDR6000 that is a good speed where almost all the samples, all the samples that I've tested, can run U clock at one to one with that mm. and get the best latency. Um, you know, so um, I do have systems in the lab running 6400 with U clock one to one. Um, but I found like not all systems could do that with yeah. a reasonable SOC voltage and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. Um, for is this system ready to go? It's Operational. Ready. Yeah. All right, let's try. Should it. be. We're gonna be in a lot better spot than we were. So we're on the 7950X again. We brought it back. Let me get this out there. Just got the XOC bench rebuilt with the 7950X. Uh, going to make another run after, I'm sending a tweet out, after, this. Working after troubleshooting the mount. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I do like these comments. The yeah. Trevor H says, this guy knows his stuff. Yes, he does. <laughs> what was that? The comment, just this guy knows his stuff. Uh, <laughs> right. I, you know. Well, I think it's easy on the company side too. Um, I was talking about this when uh, Nvidia's thermal engineer visited. Same thing, where it's like when you're when you're in the company working on the product for so long before anyone hears about it, it's easy to forget that like a lot of the daily knowledge for people working on it is not daily knowledge for everyone else. Sure. You know, so like it helps a lot to hear that stuff. Uh, you put it good in your no, one video. Um, you, you put it good in your one video where you said something like, yeah, these guys have been breaking records for months or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. and we, that we exactly had been doing <laughs> right, that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Chat saying crunch. I guess is that one of the mics or something? Made Probably when I turned it noise. on, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's fine, though. They're just... Okay, so we boot it up. It's at like two degrees. I'm gonna. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. This dude. This dude knows. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, Andrew's good. Andrew. Andrew's <laughs> been doing it a while. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> yeah, because I probably did it right by the mic. Uh, <laughs> bad habit. <laughs> that was the comment. Was a uh, that was a good crunch. I know, just all caps crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Are we playing a drinking game? Yeah. yeah. Knuckle cracking yeah, today, knuckle maybe? Crack. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, thank you, Brendan in chat. says, got my foil skeleton shirt today. That's what I'm wearing today. Uh, this shirt is pretty badass. Thank you. We worked pretty hard on that. They finally are shipping out. Um, 
they, uh, I think, I don't know if we're how far we are through the shipments, but oh everybody yeah. should be getting notifications in the next good. couple weeks. Okay. Well. So currently, I got minus twenty degrees right now. So the only thing like that I don't have is I didn't. I don't think I put PCI to Gen 2, but I'm not running a DGPU. So we're going to see what happens here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think this is, should be a little better result than what we had before. So negative 20. Let's see. Are you all using factory IHS or direct I? So they're using the factory IHS. It has not been delitted. That's right. Uh, it's not lapped or modified at all. Still talking about the knuckles. He cracked the hell out of his knuckles. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, negative 50. How refreshing is the beverage in that thermos? You cannot drink it. You don't want to mix them up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We had a, uh, we had drinks on the table next to the LM2, uh, yeah. and you really do have to be careful about what you're grabbing because you could have a drink in I the pot. I would do the same or, thing. Yeah. yeah, I I don't use any kind of like water bottle that resembles anything like a thermos. <laughs> sure, if yeah. I'm overclocking. <laughs> yeah, especially if you like, like those small thermoses. Yeah, you're really starting to get tired or something. Yeah. You, yeah. In the sun all day in LA outside, <laughs> overclocking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that open bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's for Threadripper for anyone. Who's <laughs> <laughs> we have an old video on that. Um, I wonder if you looked it up recently. Said it was like 50k views or something. Let's see. Yeah, Threadripper. Like Negative 80. All right. Are we at 6 gig? No, oh. not yet. Okay. Should be safe any moment, especially considering the previous situation. <laughs> That was my worst mount ever. The previous one? Yeah, yeah it was. It was definitely. funny is that, or not funny, but Bill knew exactly what it was, right? He's like, it's my mount. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, you <laughs> called it pretty yeah. early. It's yeah. just like, it It always sucks when you kind of, you, you're pretty sure it's the mount, but you're like, there's a lot of work to fix it, right? Yeah, but you saw I did it pretty quick. Cause yeah, you're oh quick. Yeah. It's like sunk cost fallacy, though, where you're like, I, I've already got so much time in this mount, maybe I'll just try it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, and I was definitely thinking that after yeah. I had the feeling, and I was like, no, I, yeah, no, it was obvious. Yeah. Uh, so where are you running now? So it's just at six. Um, I'll go ahead and open up Benchmate. <laughs> just at six. Yeah, because we'll, yeah. we'll, yeah. yeah, this should actually work this time, I think, so. Running Benchmate for Cinebench, it looks like. Yeah, I love Benchmate. Just if nothing else, like I can have all that stuff in one click. Right. It's awesome, yeah. Yeah, Benchmate is uh, for any of you who are looking to get into this kind of stuff, even if it's just like with water or something. Check out Benchmate, check out Hardware Bot, 3D Mark, all that. Um, those are kind of the top ones that you know, I'll normally go to if I need to download stuff for, for running benchmarks. Yeah, bench, benchmate.org. You can download the package, and it has all these these benchmarks in the package in the installer. It's yeah. very handy. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it monitors your system and makes sure it's you're not playing any games with clocking. Oh, that's right. It's for validation, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And then and then it's got the the um, it takes the screenshots and everything, so you can upload directly. To right. HW bot. Yeah. So Actually, I can just demonstrate yeah. it pretty easily. Um, so we ran. R23, and at the very top, you can see it says guarded by Benchmate, actually ah. in the application itself. If I go back to Benchmate, I can hit this button here, and it'll start to prepare everything I need for a screenshot. I also need to have, if I was actually going to submit it, we would need to have um, CPU-Z open. So usually the best thing to do is open three of those. Is that right, Bill? Y yeah. You need, uh, you need to have three the, of those? You need to have the memory <laughs> tab open <laughs> and on display. <laughs> if you don't want your uh, score removed, <laughs> yeah. no matter who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're like, but I'm from AMD. <laughs> well, and uh, um, you have to have suspicion about us because we could cheat, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. I mean, so. Fair enough, yeah. Right. But our game, you know, our goal is to um, enable the community, right? right. So, yeah. But yeah, something like this. Normally I'd be on a 4K panel so that you can see the full 
uh, Cinebench, but if, as long as you have all this information on the screen and save a screenshot, um, that's it. Cool. So it saved a screenshot in the folder. Yeah, that I like that because uh, when I went and submitted a few uh, for the Rip J stuff when I was submitting scores, it was it's always kind of a pain to like open everything up. For, I felt like the screenshot was the most nerve wracking part uh -huh. if you're on the edge of stability. Yes, yeah. it's because you're like, please don't crash. Well, I'm trying to get proof of this. That's right? why like, when you ask like Windows 11 versus 10, yeah, when it when when we were on Windows 11 and it was taking like 30 plus seconds to open CPU Z, like you are sweating bullets, <laughs> right? So and you did yeah. got to do that three times. It's not reasonable. So right. yeah, yeah. And, and remember we we're talking about blowtorching at the end. Yeah, that's the, the the harrowing part. Like the benchmark finishes, you got the record. But if it gets too cold and crashes, you can't. Yeah, you're screwed. You can't it, get the screen, screen may so even be yeah, up, yeah, and you yeah, can yeah. see it, yeah. and you can't get the screenshot okay. though. And that yeah. has so, happened. So a the lot, right. technique is, as it's finishing up, that's when you start blowtorching uh, it, okay. right? And that way you catch it right yeah, before so you it stop finishes. it from plunging. Because yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. if you so, have LN2 in here and it stops, uh -huh. and you're watching the thermometer, yeah. when that workload stops, the temperature plummets at a much rapid clip. Right. So, so, so we were benching. We, we go to Taiwan for these OC workshops. Yeah. And we were at Gigabyte, actually, and we were benching with High Cookie yeah, out there. Yeah. And you know, we were letting him, him, letting him take care Do of it. Do whatever he wants. And, and yeah. you know, he was using a, a blowtorch, and he was <laughs> trying to get right on the edge, right? right. Couldn't quite get it. <laughs> then he whips out a second blowtorch. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so as he's getting near the end, he's, he's got the double blowtorch <laughs> going. <laughs> Just to get it right, to get those last few points for the world record, man. It was high cookie yeah. is crazy. He's <laughs> so good at what it, it does. It was an awesome technique. <laughs> okay, so earlier we were yeah. crashing at six two. Are you okay? at it easily, right? Okay. Because remember the app crashes we were having. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was gets, it was getting warm, and like Ahmet said, you know the voltage requirement was going up, but right. it wasn't so bad that it crashed the whole system. So those are the best crashes. Okay, so, uh, so what do you get so far? Okay, so what? now yeah. we're at 46,254. Oh, and good like easy. Good use of the whiteboard. Easy, yeah. yeah. 54, uh, score. And what was the frequency? Uh, it was 6.2. 6.2. So I can't remember if I set a voltage offset or not, so let me check. Whiteboard, oh, yeah. by the way, not accepted as official validation. <laughs> oh, yeah. We know. We should do that. We should take a picture. And put the memory <laughs> tab up it. there. <laughs> you got to draw the memory I tab. Draw the, I draw <laughs> <laughs> and I'll put the pure oct table on here, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay. What's the next goal? Uh, so and what, and what was uh, the voltage on that? It was 1.6. 1 1.6? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I have the 100 millivolt mm -hmm. offset, even though I have the new Ryzen Master that actually fixes all this. but. So, and we're only at negative 108, okay? Oh. Like, earlier we were like negative 160 and struggling to do this. No, this seems so like... So this is a little... Two to 300 easier. megahertz faster. Yeah. Least. Something like that, yeah. I have another quick tweet, just saying. It's roll. I feel like it's rolling now. Uh, oh, we're good now. Yeah. It's amazing, like, every time I, uh, I've been through this on a stream where, you know, there's bad mount, you have to redo it, like... As soon as you fix it and it starts working well, it, uh, I feel like the whole mood changes, you know? <laughs> That's definitely what happened to you. Yeah, yeah, yours. yeah. Uh, yeah like in retrospect, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, because... I mean, you got the 6.2 with a bad with a bad mount. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but you're standing there, though, you know, like, do I fix it, well, I right? It's, like, it's bad, and then if it was only you here... That's and the problem. You, yeah, yeah, like me, I could, I, d I was able to duck back and get it done pretty quick, but... While we flailed on the other one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now it's rolling, nice. Okay, so okay, nine is one thirty-five. So this is six three. So now we're at forty-six thousand four hundred two points. We're at negative one forty-five. So I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get it as cold as we can, and we might crash and have to warm it back up and come back once we find that temperature. Because I honestly, hey, so Bill, people are asking about power. Can you just run it once more, and I'll I'll, I'll read. Sure, like yeah. it sits. Yeah, yeah, yeah just as it is, and I I'll, I can read out. So, yeah, oh, this is to. for 46,402 points. So we've got it's a... saying at the wall, about 500 watts right now. So this oh. is actually... Oh, 600. That was, that's that spike. Okay. Yeah, so, so what we see in Cinebench, it, it, it has these spikes of 100 watts during, during the benchmark. So this is total system power you're seeing on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. The benchmark is just completed. That's why it's dropped. Yep. So okay. the thing is, I can run this frequency 
at 200 millivolts less, mm. and and you can see like more probably 100 watts drop off of there or more. Oh well, yeah, I that's could because yeah, this this will actually run now with this mount. So, but a lot of times I just like to leave the voltage alone, set it high, and then creep up the <laughs> right. frequency. Yeah, yeah. Uh, change, change one thing at a time. Yeah, yeah. especially if it's going to come up anyway. Yeah. Like yeah. Okay, so here's six four. Okay. 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 It's still at 1.6 volts. So the power should be roughly the same as before. Um, oh. So the voltage is the biggest contributor there. So we're at, it added like about maybe 20 watts when it was actually running. Okay. Yeah. Quick so question let me go cold. for you from uh, chat. Does switching the process of Cinebench to real-time priority help? Yeah, it, it does. It but does. The, the problem with that is a couple of things. It, it freezes the whole GUI, uh. so you can't interact with the system. And you can't see Cinebench doesn't update for most, if not the entire run. Mm. And the system basically looks like it's locked up. So you don't know. Like, it you might be sitting there for a while. You're waiting for the result to pop up, but it never does. And the system, you, you can't tell. Right, so. okay, but yes, if but you're your chasing, score will be higher. If you're chasing the last few points, yep. yes, do yes. that. Yes. Good question from chat. Uh, is that still a 7600X? No, this is, we're back on the 7950X. So in the time that... Uh, <laughs> The 7600X was out here. Bill was sort of behind the scenes resetting this, all this towel wrapping and the remount. Uh, all of that was done in the last couple minutes, basically. So it is back on 750. So I didn't change the voltage. We're running the same 6.4. The difference is I dropped it about 40 degrees, and okay. it's going to work now. And that's the magic of going cold, right? Okay, nice. so that was 6.4? Yeah. And what did you get? 47. 1,673. Nice. So I think, I think this part can run about like negative 170. We're at negative 166 okay. now, and it yeah it locked up. So I'm gonna have to reboot, and I'll warm it up. Probably gonna have to warm it up a good little bit, and then um, and then it'll boot. Probably at like negative 120 to 130. It'll uh -huh. boot. So you still feeling pretty good about this setup now? Yeah. Nice. That's it good to hear. The well, numbers are where they should be. Yeah, yeah, we had 6 4 voltage. just worked, right? Yeah, so, right. Uh, did you meet your mic? Yeah, <laughs> yeah the mic, uh, we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to manage the mics for you all because I know it blows out the mic when we're doing that. So, I also try to keep talking so I can overcome the volume for them. So, yeah, current setup uh, scores are 46K when they were at 6.2 gigahertz at 1.6 volts. Now, 47,600, that's at 6.4 gigahertz, 1.6 volts. For just point of reference, if those numbers don't mean a lot to you, uh, when I when I was trying pretty hard, uh, I got stuck at 6.2. I think it was like 45 and a half k or something. Um, and then the I don't know some other parts. Like I don't. I should look up. We probably have numbers um, internally for like stock parts, just to let people know. Like, hey, what is it? What does it look like if you don't do anything? Let's see. Oh, yeah, like 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 mission mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or if you have any memorized, feel free to throw them I, in. I, I, <laughs> again, it depends a little bit on your cooling. Yeah. But I think around 38k, 39k okay. in there. So we were running a 360 cooler for our testing. Here's a bunch of numbers. <laughs> uh, so for quick reference, Cinebench R23. This is like GN independent, just validation. When we're doing our reviews. We don't publish these though. Uh, it's just to make sure this everything's working properly. So we're seeing like. Um, 750X, we're seeing at 36K, mm -hmm. multi-thread. Uh, let's see, 58X 3D, I mean, that's not really, that's the same as a 5800X in this application, that the 3D doesn't really help it, so, in Cinebench, mm -hmm. that I'm aware of anyway. No. Uh, so, because it's, it's entirely you know, core-bound. So, like, that would have you at, like, 14K, 5950X, about 26K, these are all stock numbers. So that kind of gives you some reference points if you're wondering what, is, what do these OC numbers really mean. Uh, 12900K is 20, 28,000 points. Um, 12 sevens, like 23. Uh, and then these guys just did uh, 47,000. So in terms of like what does that mean, you could think of it as if, you're, if, if you just calculate percent difference from the high to the low. And this kind of extrapolates to something like Blender too. If you were, if you were going to stand there and port Ellen two and render a frame, sure, then <laughs> sure it's faster. <laughs> so we did that for uh, for one of our videos once. 
with um, Damien on Island too. We were oh. talking about that actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Mike, Mike mute. Yeah, we were talking about that actually on that six core. If we could get it to all pot, uh, all uh, full pot, and then just launch in like an yeah. instance of Counter Strike or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, We've done that. We did that with. Um, uh, I think it was GTA. We were playing GTA, and so like uh, Unreal Two. Yeah, so Patrick <laughs> on my team was playing the game, and I was just managing the temperature of nice. a, a GPU and a CPU pot. Oh, <laughs> both! Wow. Oh, you had both. It's fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's not as stable because the load is like so unpredictable with gaming. For gaming. Yeah. Hey, so, so when 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 do you want to take your turn? Uh, do you, do you want to stick depends on if you feel like you're at a point where you're uh, you're you're maxed out. Uh, wouldn't or you, no, to, we, we, we can keep going. Uh, what do you think, Bill? I I go all day, yeah. all the time. You want to do like uh, try a couple more runs, maybe, and then sure. I'll I'll see if. Let me see if I can get a six five in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So actually, because what I was gonna do um, is lower the voltage actually, because mm -hmm. for all the world records that we did, we yeah. were running like one four ish, mm. something like that. So. Um, one point five. Yeah. Two. So, because if, uh, if I can get rid of some of that heat on the die, then, um, and we can lower the power all at the same time and go faster probably, so. Mm -hmm. If so I can get the machine to boot though. Yeah. What's the temp? 7B, I don't know what this is. 7B. Uh, does Bill have a recommendation of hair dryer brand for extreme overclocking? <laughs> as long as it has the kitty, you're he good. Does. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think the recommendation <laughs> is this right here. <laughs> 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 and, and that is what I don't think we talked about that, but we actually do have two circuits. We put the hair dryer on a different circuit. It actually draws more power than this whole setup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, we we talked about this question earlier, really early in stream, so I'm not going to go into it too much. But just the. Um, you see this all the time of like LN2 OC is fun, but also completely pointless because you can't work with a PC in this state. And um, what we were talking about earlier is you know, most of it is the fun part. There doesn't need to be like a, a, a comma but also because the fun is enough. Mm -hmm. um, but also we were talking about how on the company side, like manufacturing, it's helpful for R&D. So. Yeah, yeah, I know it led to things like like PBO and, and Curve Optimizer, so right. which are, are used. You know, without LN2. I mean, we have a lot of fun messing with the LN2 and everything, but our team actually architects all of the features that you guys like, like Curve Optimizer. We pitched right. that several years before it made it into, into a product. We pitched it, and that along with um, Eco Mode and some of these other things, you know, we dreamed all this stuff up, and the business folks are like, why would somebody want to make their processor slower or right. whatever, mm -hmm. right? And they... Um, but but Ecomo has been a big hit, though. No right? kidding. Publicly, yeah. yeah. So and we yeah. still need to look into that too. Yeah. yeah. There's a. I do like this one. You you were saying for all the world records we've run like 1.4. About 1.4. Yeah. Yeah. He's just pointing out for all the world records we have, but very nonchalant. <laughs> well, they <laughs> already. <laughs> I don't have any of them anymore because um, yeah. we kind of set the bar for launch day right. and we enable the community to do this stuff and then and then let them go and do it. So. On launch day, my world record for Cinnamon Char 23 was, you know, broken immediately. So, yeah, and that's what we want. So, mm -hmm. so I had the world record for R23 on the 64 core for a long time, and it was uncomfortable. So I sent a CPU sample to Splave and a couple other people <laughs> because those processors are expensive and hard to get. And so and I told Splave, I said go get all the records, all right. but take my R23 one last. And he <laughs> did exactly that. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so I, I pulled out memory. is doing a full memory training okay. and stuff like that right now. Yeah, so. So that's what it's flashing through on the yeah, post yeah. code. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, anytime you change your memory config, it has to yeah, do additional training. Right. And that, uh, I mean, that's maybe some useful information for people at home too. Without any of this, this is true, where mm -hmm. if you ever have like, I don't know, you clear CMOS or something, um, or you just upgrade your memory, install new sticks, whatever, like. Yeah, even adding sticks. Yeah, yeah. right. So uh, it'll, you have to give it a little like training. Uh, it's all automatic. It's not like training is not something you do. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you just turn it on and it'll sort itself out where it's, it's configuring the timings. 
What frequency currently? Okay, so the one that they that Bill just ran was uh, forty-seven thousand points at six point four gigahertz all core, yep. right? So that's sixty-four hundred megahertz on all sixteen cores of the CPU. I guess you leave uh, well with that score. Obviously, you leave SMT on for all of this. So yeah, for for some dimensions. Yeah, very beneficial. Do you turn it off for um, like CPU Z validation or anything? We haven't. Uh, but we haven't really pushed it. Yeah. yeah. You probably could get something more, mm. I think. Yeah, I think people will do better than like the 725 that we got because like um, I didn't do anything exotic other than the fact that it was on liquid nitrogen cooling. So right. um, we didn't go, because we could disable um, cores arbitrary in the BIOS. There's a map and you can turn off oh, any right. particular core you want. So you could conceivably turn it into a two core with like, uh, one, your good core for CPU-Z, and then mm -hmm. another core to handle the operating system and stuff like that, right. instead of just booting up on a single core. Or you could do a single core if you okay. wanted, yeah, right? right? So it's booted again. So we're at negative 80. Negative 80, going to bring it down to a lower temperature that you might say is FKN cold, <laughs> which is our current uh, discount code on store.cameraxis.net if you want to pick up a coaster pack, a large mod mat like this one, knock 10% off the price. You can do that only during the, the stream today. FK and Cole, that checkout, type that in. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, I like the code. <laughs> yeah. When did you come up with that code? Was that last night or yeah. today? <laughs> <laughs> it, it took uh, about 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it just comes that easily, the brilliant marketing ideas. <laughs> Okay, now uh, that got us to negative 115. Minus 115 degrees Celsius on the pot temperature. And the CPU sensors, for anyone wondering, they stop at about minus 50. Mm -hmm. So you do need to have the separate sensor for this. Can't use hardware info. Minus 130. So I think we died at negative 160 okay. a minute ago, so I'm just yeah, going to kind of try to hang out there. Was yeah. that with the remount? Yeah. With the remount. Okay. Yeah, and that was just idle, right? So that right. was just because it got too cold, nothing to do with running. Yeah. Okay. Um, we might need two of us to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Here, come on this. So where do you want it at? Uh, one fifty. Okay. So this will be a warm up run. At about six gigahertz. So six gigahertz warm up run right now. We're at minus 146. Yeah, okay. I'm going to drop the voltage down. Uh, I would go like 155. No? Uh, oh, oh, it's adding 100. I'm going to add yeah. one. I'm going to do 15. Yeah, okay. Let's do 15. Okay, so this will be 635. Yeah. Give that a try. Okay. So that. We're at right, at, right at minus 150. So part of it is. You add a little LN2 at the beginning of the run. But if you, yeah, again, you don't want to add it at the end because it'll get too yeah, cold. Yeah, you're doing like micro pours right now. <laughs> yeah. So you're trying to hold. Minus 150. Minus 150. As close okay. as I can. So when the bench is finishing, you do you stop a little in advance? Yeah. Right before it's done. Oh, look at that. Okay. 47, 491. All right. And so what frequency was that? 635. So that scales okay. perfect. So what are the numbers? Or is this? It was a little lower. A little no, lower. That was a warm up. Okay. okay. Yeah. But, but it was very close to that. This one should be better. Okay. Uh, is it going? Yep. Okay. So this is 6.4. Six, 6.4. Four. Six, four. We'll try to get our way up to 6.5. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to, to not let it get too cold, uh, not too warm while it's running, but not too cold when it's done. Okay. And so the, the power did drop like 100 watts, like I said, when I lowered that voltage. And we're actually operating um, Holy crap. at a at exact at same score. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now where are you going? Twenty five uh, megahertz? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. If I can if we can get like forty eight thousand five hundred, I'm pretty happy with that. I think Steve will be having a difficult time. <laughs> I have a difficult time with six yeah. three, six two. Well, now, no, no, you, but now you, you got you a got Samson Bill mount. Dude. mount dude. Yeah. That's true. Yes, that way I have no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I think I should remount that. There you go. Okay, sixty four fifty. That was four seven eight three one that time. Okay. 
And uh, I think we hit on this before, but I'll just mention, if I was actually trying for world records right now, um, it'd be a little bit different because I'd be closing Ryzen Master uh, yeah, um, right. and some stuff like that. Um, that's worth a few points um, just by itself. So, okay, we're almost Four, at 48,000. 47961. Should we write that one down? Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. What's the... 47961. And that was it. 6.45. Yeah. And 1.5. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll close Ryzen Master this time. This uh -huh. should put us over 48,000. Okay, and this might be a good. Maybe head for 155. Okay. Uh, hold on then. So you can imagine if we were actually running full pot, uh, this is going we could just fill the thing up and you don't have to modulate the temperature like this. It's much simpler. Okay, go for it, man. And this is where actually those smaller pots are useful. Because if you're doing these micro pours, oh yeah, it's like a little easier to control. That makes sense. That should be good. Okay. All yeah. right. Nice. Forty-eight, three sixty-eight. Okay. Um, Four, so eight, three, six, eight. Three, six, eight. And what was the frequency and voltage? Six point four seven five. <laughs> That's <laughs> very precise. <laughs> One point five. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, so we're going for six and a half? Yeah. Okay, and you want 155? Yes. Kay. All right, I'll close this again. Okay. So you can see the difference that that made doing <laughs> redoing that mount, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's right where it it's uh Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna do a that one of those. So maybe, that, maybe that's it for us. Maybe. Yeah, sure. Yeah, think? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> for other reasons, <laughs> I don't know if I am. We'll see. <laughs> All right, okay, I'll now, do my best. look, yeah. it okay. shut itself down, and the uh, power supply is still on, and this isn't working. Right. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Throw them into the deep end? Actually? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I would do, okay. minus 155. I feel like it's kind of. I oh, didn't do that. Right. To you don't Because I don't do that. That's right. Yes. yes. <laughs> Safety <laughs> only first. Uh, only I <laughs> actually lock them. <laughs> you took off the fan. Yes. That was, that was good. I was watching for that. <laughs> uh, we, we were both yeah. watching. I was watching for that. <laughs> I've made that mistake. <laughs> Haven't we it's all? It's just plastic, you know. Yeah. Like you, you make that mistake quick. one time, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, so there's a trick here. Okay. If you yeah. add oxygen, you can get your flame like twice as hot almost. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, that's why <laughs> I, I should. Like oh, that. I should have muted my mic so when I was doing that. Yeah, yeah. Watch. Right. Oh no, no, actually, no. You got to recover this thing now. <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> is this just an on off? Is that all this is? Yeah. Uh, the bottom one, I believe. Yeah. There's a high and low, I think. The yeah. bottom one. Yeah. Oh. You of all people should know how to operate one of those, I don't right? Know one of these. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, here, keep this a little bit away from the flame. Yeah. There we go, like that. Go to negative 120 or 115. Okay. Let me kill this just for a uh, noise. So we're at minus 118. Minus 118 now. Minus 117. Man, this pot is so reactive. Yeah. That's cool. it's reactor. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, did you have a preference on where you're mounted? You're just putting this on one peg? Sure. Guess, yeah. yeah. Thread ripper, you can do two. Okay, right. they're asking you to step up, Steve. Uh, <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> they sabotaged me first, though. Okay, so board's recoverable. So the, the answer to Bill's question of power supply is, is on, but there's no lights on the board was heated up, I guess is that answer. And... Did you clear SEMA? I'll clear it. No, but it probably <laughs> did by itself. Oh, that's true. It, it might or it might have. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay, so it's not... So watch this. So it's hung up. That's some weird code. 8A? Yeah, so... So you just reset. Yeah, so maybe um, most of the CPUs I've been trying are uh, cold bug mm. or cold boot bug at negative 120. Okay, so um, it's maybe still too cold. Yeah. Minus 108 now. 15, is that training? That's memory training. Yeah, it okay. is. And then um, Kitty has another function. You can um, go to BIOS like that. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, so for anyone who, who can't see past all this stuff, the the real pro tip secrets, <laughs> hearing it here from experts who get paid to do this, <laughs> is time is money. <laughs> is to set the 
uh, the hair dryer on top of the escape button. <laughs> or delete, you know, whatever. Or delete. <laughs> That's the real pro tip. <laughs> this is why I hope you learned something. Today. <laughs> yeah. This is why AMD doesn't need a huge XOC team because of this efficiency right yeah, here. Yeah. Like normally you would have to hire someone to push that button. <laughs> but this <laughs> we're a lean team. <laughs> <laughs> I did that for, uh, I forget what it was, some kind of game a long time ago. Tape down uh, left mouse button. Something where you're like harvesting something for okay. infinity, okay, you can just right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're 15, we're, we're memory training at this moment. You've got the memory really insulated. Does it, um, I does, does it start to care about heat from all the paper towel around it? Or no, you, okay. because it's, um, no, it's probably below room temperature. Uh, just it's, cause it's, it's just barely warm at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. So Just from, from running it cold. Yeah, system. because like I said, on AM4 it was a lot different, but here, um, the way the socket is designed in the back plate and it's much more integrated, and so a lot more heat travels out of the board into the, into the pot because okay. of that, so. Um, Amit's yeah. over here. Uh, experiencing life as someone streaming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How's the well, chat? Well, here, here's something funny. So, so uh, like, like we said, we do these teams things where we're working together. Yeah. And what we started doing, kind of mimicking your, your live streams. Yeah. That, you know, is we send each other loonies and toonies. Oh, okay. Just, yeah. just in text. <laughs> right. Cause our, right. Our, uh, Adam's in Canada, right? right, right. And so a Adam Clark just sent us a toonie. So oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the PEO -E just um, said something. Yeah, P yeah, on behalf of PEO, that's our uh, manufacturing org. They say thank you, Bill and I. Uh, okay, so, cool. Yeah. So thanks that's for the cool. toonie. Uh, 5F, it looks, Adam. okay, wait, here we go. All right. Okay, so 5F. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to get there now. Um, and then we'll be in BIOS because of Kitty. And then, right. so, but. Fred, uh, just to clarify, uh, Kitty is not like a special extreme overclocking tool. It's it's. I'm sorry. Yes, it, it is. is. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it it's is. offensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hair dryer, but it is a special overclocking tool. How long have you had this? Um, that one I've had for probably a couple three years. I oh got okay. it for Vermeer probably. Oh yeah. yeah. This is not the first gen. It's not my first Th Kitty. This is not the, first <laughs> the other one got <laughs> damaged in yeah. transport, and then yes. I determined that I must have backup kitties. Right. Yeah. So the reason I have Kitty is because High Cookie uses a Kitty hair dryer. Oh, does so he? So that's <laughs> that's yeah. So okay. Uh, okay. So we're so in BIOS. We need to look and see are our settings here. Yes, they are. They are. That's so a good we need thing. To clear it. Okay. So, okay, if you want to do that and put yourself through that pain, you go right ahead. <laughs> uh, we should just randomly change one second. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be bad. Uh, go to just, exit. You just turn, oh, I was going to save a profile first. Oh, it's saved. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Exit. Oh, yeah. It's just clear. Load uh, UEFI defaults. Uh, Up one. Up one. Uh, yeah, it's a little. There we go. Okay. okay. Default settings. Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll, st s we'll st I'm trying to get it to go to the right. There we go. A little slow on the response. Is that a temperature thing? No. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So I'm going to go to AMD overclocking, accept, and go to, I don't remember what VDG DG was. I think it was 1.2. I'm going to just start there. We didn't touch it though. Didn't I'll touch just it. I'll just help you out. We okay. didn't touch it. Should yeah. I leave it alone? That one was default. Mm -hmm. Default. I guess I'll turn Allen two mode on. Yes. So let's do Allen two mode enabled. Let's go to VDD misc. I think you did, or did you end up leaving it? I did. Uh, I did all this in the OC tweaker oh, menu. Okay. Um, okay. In but you could do it here. Yeah. Um, you may get a different result than what I had. Oh, let's go back. Um, yeah. So just to Allen two mode. Allen two mode. You do. have to do. Yeah. So there's another one in there you should do. Oh, there is? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's not a voltage. It's not a frequency. Not a voltage. You were in the right menu. There you go. Okay. Not there. One out. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You mean just in here somewhere? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's not PBO. You said you're not changing those. There you go. This okay. is on it's already. It's on. Good. So we okay. want that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we're it. good in here. Okay. So then. Let's go back to OC Tweaker. You said you were setting all the voltages in here. That's right. Let's go to MLE VDDG alone, VDD MISC. 
one point two. Uh, so remember, um, I don't want I don't want you to fail so bad here. Yeah. Uh -huh. So remember, um, the VDDG voltages are fed from VDD MISC. And remember, oh, yeah, yeah, and ASRock yeah. has those at 1.2 by default. Right. So you have to be, you know, 75 or 100 millivolts higher than that on VDD MISC. Right. So we were running 135, 135. for that one. How about 135? <laughs> that would work for a moment, maybe. That would be very red. <laughs> Should <have> microseconds. <laughs> uh, okay. IF, were you setting IF manually? Um, I might just leave it alone. I, I think know. we were. Actually, uh, I wasn't because I know. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I, I think we were set. Yes, we set it to eighteen hundred. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna leave memory alone for now. Did you end up? I know you changed between this a few times. Did you end up just keeping auto and uh, doing it all through OS? The like when we were just benching just now, it was on auto. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. You should be fine, but yeah. setting it won't hurt anything either. Okay. All right, let's set it then. And then this has the new version of Ryzen Master, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to set it because you were mentioning getting but potentially better stability at boot. Um, yep. So we'll set that to just 4500 1.25, which I remember, Bill, you specifically said was acceptable <laughs> for, yeah. for boot. So mm -hmm. we'll do that. If you're cold. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what am I looking for? SOC, I guess. I set to 1.4. I remember you had something at 1.35, which I guess was MISC. Um, and then I think... I think that's kind of all I want to change right now. <laughs> so go in the B clock real quick. Okay, B clock. Down here, B clock configuration. Yeah. Okay. So this, um, that that one right there, spread spectrum control. Oh, uh, are you disabling it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So yeah, this. I every time I've turned that off, it's only because I've been told to turn it off. Mm -hmm. Can, are either of you able to explain why for me? Yeah. So spread spectrum, what it does. So, so normally we have a crystal that, that gives the clock to the to the processor, and that's uh -huh. very precise, right? And what ha what they found is that if you had a bunch of computers running at exactly the same frequency, it would mess with with emissions, right? Uh, okay. R RF okay. stuff, right? And the spread so spectrum changes the location of the peak of the sine wave, mm. and and spreads it out, so it's not centered in one location. Okay. So the um, so, it's not like so you hard of a spike, you don't get that big spike from okay. that one frequency. Yeah, peak but there. but two things happen. Well, so one is since it's spread in um, time, mm. the, the average frequency actually goes down, right? Because you're spending more time at the yeah. lower than the higher. Right. So the average frequency drops to like 99.8, 99.6. Okay. But what what's happening is it's really ranging from like 99.5 to 100.5. Yeah. And so you still have to be able to meet timing at 100.5, uh -huh. but you're only getting the performance of 99.8. Okay. So it kind of hurts you in two ways. Yeah, yeah. for years I've been turning, yeah. sp doing disable spread spectrum on on uh, you know, Intel and AMD alike, yeah. and I never actually knew why, other than someone told me to once. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great explanation. So you need it for regulatory reasons, mm -hmm. like uh, OEM shipping a system. Mm -hmm. It's going to have spread spectrum on for sure. Is uh, SSD in here right now? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. Okay. Let's do it. Do you need an LN2 port? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. We can provide that. <laughs> no, <laughs> the pour in you mean, or yeah. from back there? Either way. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you, th yeah. I'll try okay. uh, managing the pot, All and right. then um, I'll start it, uh, I guess I probably should have blown the ice off first, right? Hey, man, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're <laughs> learning <laughs> right, as you go. I normally don't do that, so that is actually that a very good takeaway, I think, because normally I just pour straight in, and then you get all the water in the pot. Um, this is twice now. It's gone back into BIOS and um, the suggestions. Okay. Oh, it didn't see a drive for some reason. I wonder why. So you're s really sabotaging the <sighs> no operating system. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> actually, though, we're, this is good, okay? Uh -huh. Because you missed um, something okay. here. Um, you want to go in CPU options CBS. and CBS okay. and disable C states. Oh, okay, yeah. Remember, thanks, we yeah. talked about CC6. Uh -huh. So that's power gating. It's actually taking power away from the cores and turning them off, right? right? And it could do that a lot in a second, and you don't, that's, power gating is bad for overclocking. Right, so, right. Um, and then um, the other thing that we can do either in CBS or you can do it in overclocking menu in the memory settings is uh, controller configuration mm -hmm. and uh, power down enable. Oh, you yeah, want I that disable. That one off, yeah. And then um, bus config. 
Okay, so he's missing a setting in here. We got to go back to CBS. Okay. Is this related to the drive not detecting or no? No, uh, okay. we'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's next. We, um, but the other thing too, memory features, and we can turn this off. Okay. okay. So in normal mode, each you of these is like on. once you get to it, I'm remembering. Sure. A couple hours ago, you turned it <laughs> off, but uh, the navigating BIOS is. Um, I, I haven't uh, for these settings. Haven't memorized where they all are yet, so that's helpful. Should so we blast this off? To yeah, I'm gonna. Um, I'm just power cycling. So, um, whenever. Um, so hopefully the SSD will come back now after yeah. the power cycle. Okay. So getting the ice off the rim. Should we bring yep. it back up? Sure. Yep. So power supply switched back on. Now let's power up. I guess I'll wait on the port and see what happens with the drive. Yeah, let's see if we get the drive back. That was not intentional. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah, it's just you're passing it off to me. Just unscrew the drive. And <laughs> <laughs> I normally don't even screw them in. I only did yeah. that because we were traveling. traveling yeah. yeah. Okay, so training with fifteen. This thing is still iced over back here, this other one. Yeah, I Yeah, we'll get it in a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I think we got we got plenty to do with this 750X anyway. Is it coming up? Uh it's, it's not doing anything bad. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> it's doing memory training. Yeah. Um Samson tip. Yeah. Wipe off the water on there oh, before you pour. So yeah. it doesn't end up on the board or in the pot. Okay. Yeah. Samson tip. <laughs> Samson tip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just start a. I feel like that deserves to be just on some like '90s style HTML blog. <laughs> Samson tip. <laughs> just have have a whole list <laughs> of <laughs> like have a Usenet group. <laughs> but totally non sequitur, right? Like it's got to have no context whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are booting. That's that's good. That gives me some hope. Okay. Cool. Uh, All right, and everything else, yeah, should be set. Okay, so this one, I know you were trying to keep it at like minus. I saw it at minus one forty-seven mm -hmm. when you were maintaining it. Yep. So I guess I'll tar I'm going to target a little bit warmer than that. See how it goes as as we're getting. Um, I don't remember how much you were bringing it down before you got started, but I do remember a few like minus eighty runs and minus seventy runs. Do you need to run mm -hmm. as admin for this? Yeah, I. It's good, right? Because okay. if it if it works, you just Spend a little time. If it doesn't work, then there's something else you have to tweak. Right. Where do you have Cinebench hidden on here? Oh, we get oh, Benchmate. Bench mate. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Benchmate. Let's do R23. Yep. Oh, sorry. Yeah, oh. thanks, Andrew. Oh. Good call, man. Yeah. Real MVP. <laughs> Calling all the mic on off toggles and <laughs> the <laughs> thermos presence. Okay. Uh, so. For this, I guess we're still at your settings here, so I'm going to bring that down. Um, yeah, I was your voltage isn't in here. Uh, voltage is right there. Oh no, I mean like your previous volt, or was that what you were running? That's what we were running. Oh, you were running one four. Okay. No, no, no. So okay, <laughs> when, when Bill did it, he had yeah. an offset in the BIOS. Oh, so it was right, adding 100 right, 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 right. But you don't need that now because he cause put the new Ryzen master yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. he should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just want this thing to work first. So I'm going to I'm going to bring it down to like to 55. Okay. Um and can we type in this? Yep. Okay, nice. Uh so we we don't have an offset applied. Let's do 1.45, which should be I feel like more than enough based on what I was doing before. And then uh, actually, can you just go to the Home screen. Let's just make sure of this. Uh, yep, of Ryzen Master. Okay, and that'll show what we're really at. So for voltage, you mean? Yep, one point four five. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Yep. Got you're it. good, man. That's good to know. Um, so this is just a, a. Is it a live readout or is it like the last it's update? It's thing? live. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's it's similar. So you can open CPU Z and check too. Right. Okay. These are like mega thermals. If you do the offset trick on any of our platforms. Um, then Ryzen Master. Then um, 
yeah, just you just gotta keep in mind. Um, oh, Mike. Yeah. Okay, so I just wanted it to run once <laughs> before. Okay, you you have. I'm you're, done. You're I on the it. board. You're on the I board. I did it. It's over. <laughs> Uh, you can write down the score. Is it AMD. is. It's actually. Uh, it's forty-eight thousand three hundred sixty-eight. <laughs> I, I need. I need a second validation <laughs> of that. Yeah, forty-one oh four six. Also, I'm gonna stop using Benchmade now. And, uh, <laughs> okay, so we gotta run at forty-one k. Okay. Forty-one something. Uh, uh, forty-one zero four six. Okay. So and let me bring that up now. Let's 5. do 5.5, and you're at 1.45. Yeah, I'm going to do okay. 5,800 now. So we're just going to add through. Oops, I should, probably should have brought it down first. I should have blown that off first, but <laughs> it's too late now. Are, are you talking to us, Steve? <laughs> what? Are you talking to us? <laughs> <Steve? laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm it's surviving, so I guess I won't add anything yet. We'll bring it down to the next one. So all right, forty-two eight eighty-three uh, with that was five point eight, one point four five. So I'm gonna keep leaving the voltage alone, I guess. And uh, let's just go up to six if it'll run. But I think for this, I probably want to bring it down more. I would. Yeah. yeah. So. But it'll run. I'm sure it will. It, it's not gonna crash. It's but gotta gotta come down at some point anyway, right? I guess mm. so. Uh, okay. So I'm going to bring it to like, I guess like minus 110 and see what happens. So currently minus 108. And this is 6 gig? This okay. is 6, yeah. Ooh, yeah. 6 gigahertz. And then 6.2, just for people watching, I guess my personal <laughs> goal isn't necessarily like beat these guys. Because uh, I... I like to live in reality. Mm. So my actual goal is to just get past 6.2 where I was stuck last time. That would be I that would good, that yeah. would be great. Yeah. What would you get? 44,428. Okay. That's 6 gig. That's that is 6, yeah. And uh that's that still 1.45. So let's bring that up to let's just jump to 6. Let's jump to 6 62.25. That looks good. <laughs> <laughs> good and crashy. <laughs> good and crashy. <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> thanks. Hey. I don't feel like I'm feeling really uh, it's, the, it's the small pieces on the edge I'm getting OCD about. Thank you. Yeah, I, I feel you. So minus 120. I'd go ahead. Um, Lower? Maybe. I would head for like 140 at least. Okay. Yeah. We were doing 155, and that's that should be fine. Right. All right. So minus 130. I can't see it anymore. <laughs> minus 140. <laughs> Actually, look pretty cool. <laughs> you, it looked like you were only really doing a lot of poor control when you were um, when we were right at, at the, the edge. Yeah. So I'm trying to hold minus 140. And okay. It, okay. Cool. So we are past, well past actually in the score. Uh, I was at 45,500 something last time at 62. Oh. So well, this is so. What did you run now? 6225. 60 60 yeah. 6225. Yeah. yeah. 1.45 still volts. Yes. And what was the score? 46,275. I mean, I'm happy with yeah. that just for wow. just for getting past the <laughs> 62. I was stuck yes. at. We're stuck on that for like an hour in that last stream. Yeah, I saw yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I think. All think right. I had a lot of five. Did too. Like you should be able to pull it off. I bet. Let's Might see. take a couple of tries. Uh, let's just bring it up to, let's try like a 63, no, that's not that big of a junk, let's do 64. Uh, I'm going to preemptively just bring this up to 1.5. There's no offset right now. No offset. Mm -hmm. So. Unless you put one in. <laughs> no, I did not. Uh oh, so he just killed Ryzen Master, so here we're, we're going for real points here. <laughs> So same with like uh, if you use, it matters a little more on the GPU I, I think um, with some of those benches. But if you leave like precision or afterburner, uh, mm -hmm. Port Royal, you know, it eats points sometimes. Oh sure. Okay, I'm gonna stop it. Probably poured a little too much. My yeah. So this is this what you were telling me is typically indicative of like too low voltage for the frequency? Yeah. Yes. Or or too much heat. All right. So that's yeah. that's good. I'm 
I'm learning. It means you're kind of on so, the edge. But you could also try to run it again, and it might work, right? OK, yeah. Like, I mean, really. But, but it, means, it means you're close to the edge. Right. Yeah, so. Uh, so I'm going to do like 152 and stop there. Um, let's launch our 23. And minus 142 already. I think the the most helpful thing I've learned so far today is the what that message tells me. Because mm -hmm. oh, it pops up. Oh, yeah. So go a little colder. Let's okay. go to 155 and try again. OK. So but yeah, about the message. Yeah, because yeah, I, I I was pretty sure it was like an overclock setting issue. But because it's a software message, I'm never 100% sure if it's, mm -hmm. if it's my fault We're or familiar not. with it. Yeah. Actually, we're happy to see that because it, Cause it means it didn't crash. Yeah. <laughs> right. It tells you something, right? Yeah. Like, Mm. Okay. Yeah. Go to 155 All and right. just try again. I'm afraid of the uh, crashing from cold. All right. That's fine. I should have opened it first. So we're at minus 158. Please launch. <laughs> <laughs> it's alive. Oh no, sort it's of. not. Oh, did it just die? It's no longer alive. Okay. So hold on. Okay. We might be able to recover it okay. here. So. Phil's trying to bust some of the ice off and heat it up a little bit, I guess, marginally to get this running. We do have a torch, but so do you heat with the? Oh, it guard? finally went. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, and and it's uh, it's slow, but yeah. it but it can work. Yeah. Uh, okay, so at this point, how does this one do with booting at minus one forty-five? Mm, probably not. Okay. <laughs> I've not seen that color on that screen before, so I'll heat that up, I guess. Is that, yeah, what is that? Yeah, he doesn't want this. Uh, I'm going to let you, uh, do you want to talk about basically anything? Just round out this. <laughs> sure, okay. All right. Um, what's a good thing to talk about? We talked about the feature that we've added. Uh, Expo is the new thing on Zen 4. I've got the uh, paper towel a little toasty. <laughs> did, you, did you send it? Oh, Spanish what is I can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to be careful in the lab with that. Yeah, yeah we, just, we just moved to a new lab um, in Austin. I, I guess you weren't at the old lab. What's, what's in the XOC lab? So the old lab was, was kind of self-contained. It had its own door. We had oxygen sensors in there and everything to, for safety. But it was contained for noise. Right. So, so now we've moved to a new building. It's nice, but it's one big lab covering the whole building. And so, you know, the noise can travel. Right. Uh, yeah. Kind, kind of all over. I already got a complaint. <laughs> but you know what they told him? Bill's doing his job. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of is the cool part. This is actually our job. Yeah. So right. Part of the so job. Part of the job. Not, not the whole job yeah. from... That was what uh, someone earlier asked that we had kind of addressed, so I didn't answer it, but mm -hmm. was asking, um, what do I have to do to get a job as an overclocker at AMD? And it sounds like the answer is you have to do a lot of other stuff than just overclocking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like uh, to contribute to the designs, basically, right? Yeah. No, I mean, design, I mean, manufacturing, validation, we have lots of, lots of elements. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know if he mentioned it earlier, but we were talking about architecting the features and stuff like that. Right. And, um, I think we've got at least three patents, and we've got like probably 15 or so, at least in flight right now. Yeah, there's a there's Filed. In flight. Yeah. yeah. Filed and waiting for yeah. approval. Yeah, yeah so right. Yeah, we always get excited when one goes through. Yeah, it's yeah, we cool, have a, right? We have a chat, we call it the, the AMD SOC chat. Oh, okay. And so, and so we always blow that up. Yeah, I know like some of the Corsair guys who have a bunch of patents on thermal design and stuff. Uh, oh, that's a great question. <laughs> Great question from <laughs> from uh, Matt off camera. Um, what is an AMD fellow or a fellow in general? It's kind of used the same way between all the silicon companies. But so, Bill, I get or uh, Amit, right? Your title officially is is it just fellow? Is that it, all it yeah, is? Yeah, it's AMD fellow. Yeah. yeah. So we always put XOC team in like the title cards because everyone knows what that means. Uh, do you want to explain what fellow means? Uh, yeah. So we have we have two tracks. At AMD, we have a technical track and we have a managerial track. And um, so, as you progress, you start off as a as a design engineer. 
Um, the next set of levels is what we call technical staff. Mm -hmm. So there's senior member of technical staff, principal member of technical staff. Then above that level is, is when fellow starts. Mm -hmm. right? So and we have three levels of fellow in the company. Uh, fellow, senior fellow, and corporate fellow. Yeah, it's on the technical yeah. side, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, so that's all the technical side. Now there's an analog on the managerial side, but there's kind of a, uh, I don't know, it's, when you get to fellow, it's considered kind of an executive level. So you get... Executive yeah. engineer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so we have two fellows on the OC team. Oh, that is very full. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I That's a Samson pour. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to transfer it into a... Oh, dude. What? I wouldn't... No, you I don't like that? I normally don't hold it when I'm doing that. Like oh, it's okay. Omit has uh, <laughs> post-traumatic <laughs> stress because of uh, incident that we don't talk okay. about. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Okay. <laughs> An incident. But hey, man. It's your here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... I said it's a 63, I don't know, 50 or 25 or something. You better um, go colder. Yeah, and uh, we're at 1.52 still. Um, is that baby doer available on the store or what? Not on ours, okay. although we should do something. This is a Corsair one, which uh, I don't know how old this is. This was given to me by Stefanzi. Nice. Um, I guess I should be wiping this off too, right, to get rid of the frost and stuff. Around. Learning off a little you. bit. Yeah, <laughs> learning a little bit. I've noticed you, Bill, I feel like you spend more time doing like frost and water and ice control than anyone I've ever seen do overclocking. Because I'm in the lab and I have to keep the machine running for a whole day potentially. Right. So I don't want to mess with the water. So yeah. But yeah, yeah most people want to get to the record as soon as possible because. Mine doesn't look as time. cool, right? Because uh, a lot of the other guys, they have ice everywhere right. and yeah so it's all frosted over and yeah stuff. And that looks cool yeah uh oh app crash go colder yeah so what are you running right now uh let's see i think it's 63 50 or 24 yeah and 1.52 i brought it down for 64 63 75 try 155 i guess okay Five. What the heck? Uh, di did you install the new Rising Master? Was that on the other board I did that? Yeah, it probably oh. was. Okay, yeah, yeah. so sorry about that. I kind of I sabotaged sabotage you. Sabotage. Right. Yeah. Pure yeah. sabotage. Yeah. So All right. So, so here, your option is you could go do the offset in the BIOS, mm. or we can install the new Ryzen Master. Right. Uh, I'll do the offset in BIOS. Yeah, I wouldn't sign up for the beta Seems testing. like it, so. it worked pretty Yeah, the well. offset works great. Let's see. Yeah, it might, might actually post. Hold on. But so we're looking at 15 on the postcode. Is that telling us it's training? Yes. Again? Okay. Let me add this back on. This fan kicks, man. Hey, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> hey, James. <laughs> Just reading the chats. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, 8A. So, so too cold? Yeah, heat it up. I think I think last time it worked at like one oh five or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so currently, uh, I, I like that people are hearing you say your your OC screen name, Samson, yeah. and uh, we're getting Samsung. Samsung. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've had that. Yeah. Yeah. That's also, okay. there's a comment, Bill Giga Chad. <laughs> I don't know what you did that. Uh, that was so deserving of. Oh man. That praise. <laughs> I don't know how to react to that one. That's the correct reaction. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, that is how you react to that one. <laughs> That's my reaction to probably about half the comments that I see. <laughs> so it's minus 96. It's training memory. Um, I guess the the big thing is we need to get. Um, the voltage offset applied. Yes. yes. So this is on the older version of Ryzen Master, which mm -hmm. stops at like 1.55. 152. 152, thank 152. you. Oh, I was going to use the trick, but <laughs> the put the put the hair dryer on the delete key trick. <laughs> uh, okay, so voltage. Um, 
Where is the offset option, actually? So go down. I think it's. Um, oh, sorry. So that's DRAM. CPU. Should be under CPU. Did you do offset? Uh, yeah, yeah we definitely did it. Um, this is just auto and customize. Jumber drive. Jumber bill? Where's offset? What's this? Oh, the voltage yeah. offset? Mm -hmm. External voltage. Oh, okay. okay. And then uh, here. And you left LSE at just level two, right? I did. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, I mean, you know. Maybe get more, but. Yeah. And then just go offset, and then you can program it here in okay. millivolts, and that's it. Okay. Yep. Got it. No one where stuff is. Is I feel like most of this, most of the, most of my weaknesses with this have been um, obviously not knowing the additional BIOS settings beyond sort of like OC tweaker page. Mm -hmm. um, so you you disabled that something to do with memory. I want to say it was called like memory speed something. Well, well there's memory, memory power down, power, power down, down, and context restore. Mm -hmm. Those are the two, yeah. and. Um, I think we're looping both of those into LN2 mode, I think. But actually, probably not. Uh, maybe memory power down. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I suspect some people are actually have figured out how to use memory context restore to do some um, better memory overclocking on LN2. Um, but I don't want to give away any secrets. But sure. I'm pretty sure I've reverse engineered what some people have done, <laughs> 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 and, which is clever. There's yeah. Some clever people out there. Yeah. That's what's cool about it, right? It's like seeing all the tricks that come out. Uh, okay, so we're gonna try again. It's at minus 83. So, I think I'm gonna keep bringing it to like minus 150-ish. And now this should come down, right? Because yeah, yeah, we you're applied adding, an adding offset. Mm -hmm. uh, so the trick here is don't go above um, like 152 now Okay. Um, in the menu. Right. So we were going for one, like, five, five, right? Mm. So, yeah, you can go for one, four, five, yeah, and you'll be, you'll be there. Yeah, that sounds good. And then this time when you check it, check it in. So hold on, don't it. apply yet, because you're only at negative 80. Oh, yeah, and yeah. that's kind of a Because it'll clock. instantly, like, okay. Like, six gig will probably work, but, oh, um, yeah. I should have uh, got Kiddied it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do it that way. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. The fan, we actually never talk about why it's there, uh, but it's just to get the vapor away from the system, right, right, to kind of mm -hmm. reduce the condensation buildup on the board and stuff. That's it. Yep. Because that, I mean, that vapor is cold, and it just drops right onto the board. Yeah, so it's it, heavy. And it doesn't take very long at all um, for stuff to start getting wet if you do that. Right. All right, so it's minus 120, minus 122. Uh, should I wait till like minus 150 to hit apply? Uh, 140. 140. Yeah. All right. Well, we're kind of there. Did I pour too much? Minus 139. That looks pretty good. So what did you do? Are you spec at 6375 right off the yeah. bat? Yeah. Okay. I did not do the walk up approach. Okay. <laughs> let's see how that works for you. <laughs> uh, uh, this is where I feel like I normally get that. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. So there. Um, you're there. You're uh, there. Yeah. Like you should have been just adding some little pores there okay. during the run. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Uh, the first step is knowing there's a problem, <laughs> and the problem is, uh, well, one of the many problems is um, I, I'm realizing one of the other than BIOS settings and stuff. I'm really bad about getting rid of ice buildup on things. So, like just pouring that right now, I was like, I probably should have wiped that off first. <laughs> so, that it's is that's the biggest lesson I've gotten. The, but it's very forgiving. Uh, the board is with the um, with the Vaseline and stuff on there. Now, if you got it down here, that could possibly be a problem. But and then the other thing too is people worry about the water like it's going to destroy the board. Oh yeah, and it just acts funny most of the time. Yeah, I've never had any kind of failure from water, and I've had, um, you know, CPU sockets that look okay. like a lake. Yeah, so, so I'm just, I'm just okay, feather it in. Yeah. Keep going. Oh, stop. Okay. Oh yeah, thanks. So yeah, stay. Um, try to keep it at 155. Okay. So we're at minus 155 now. Yeah. So just let it. Do it again, but keep it there? Yeah, okay. yeah, just add LN2 to keep it there. No! Oh. Too cold? Too cold. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. No. We're at like 6.375, so what do you want? 
Yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, so, okay, let's see what it does. We're gonna probably, yeah, we're gonna need to heat it up. Yeah. Probably do like, I wanna try and get one more run in and then okay. we can call that the score. But so far, I mean, uh, this has been very helpful because <laughs> I don't know. You're you're flying blind, you know. If you, and there's some amount of research we can do, um, but the information is so scattered all over the internet, and like uh, I don't know, having it actually condensed and provided by people who know it's a lot of the OC forums. I feel like there's so much like mysticism, you know, and like and like superstition around some stuff. Sometimes like, it's hard to know, am I caring? Like, did this matter or did it not? Yeah, am I caring thing? about the right thing? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I'll probably be able to go live in, in the future with these parts and probably do a lot better. Oh, yeah. So that, that's really exciting to me is to be able to, be able to put some yeah, better and, numbers. And kind of the key is, like, to know what you should be hitting. Right. right? And right. if you're not hitting that, then there's something wrong, and you got to figure it out. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's booting already. I know uh, one of the things Stepanzi talks about is like uh, score efficiency, he calls it, where it's kind of like what we were seeing a second ago where the, um, the numbers, the Cinebench numbers I was getting for the frequencies I was setting were proportionally better than last time, which is probably because a bunch of the settings I hadn't tweaked in BIOS or something, or maybe just cold, I don't know, where like um, the, where was it? This 6.0 is like, is that better than Awfully close. Yeah, it's better than the 6.0 I posted last time. Okay. Um, but by how much? There's a lot of yeah, run-to-run. Run. Yeah, it's run-to-run run run variance, run. right? Because really, functionally, the only thing you, you changed was the spread spectrum, I think. Like Versus uh, when I ran it solo? Yeah. I, almost none of those changes. I, I did not... Spread spectrum is the one that... It's the one that would affect the score. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the one that would affect the score. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So maybe be run-to-run, to run too. Mm -hmm. I think so. We um, run it, like, once we find a stable setting, then we'll run Cinebench, you know, five, six, seven times, yeah. right, and pick the highest score. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what it looks like has happened is uh, CMOS might have been cleared, so your oh, best okay. bet is to um, go in CMOS and make sure, and then you can use the boot menu from there mm -hmm. to load to go straight to Windows if we don't need to change anything. Okay, and we'll try and do this as, like, last round for anyone in chat. Uh, but so far, for a quick recap of the scores, so we had, for on the AMD side, um, I guess first of all, like, candidly, everyone got a, a very real look at, like, what is it to actually get set up and start posting scores. Like, you just have to be persistent, and sometimes it's something like a mount where it's, uh, it's just patience to fix it, and Bill got it fixed pretty fast, so. Um, so scores. You guys stopped for this one at 6.475. We were talking about the 7 gigahertz number earlier and should clarify that one. So uh, CPU-Z validation is a lot easier to get higher frequencies than like Cinebench R20 or R23 or whatever. Um, so you guys were hitting like 7-something. Was it just 7.0? 7.25. 7.25. On, yeah. on the 6-core part we yeah. did, yes. Yeah, on, six, on 7600X with CPU-Z validation. Yes. Um, and uh, what? So what is CPU-Z validation actually? Is it basically just li literally like it's running at this frequency? Yeah, it's idle. It's at desktop. I, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure if, if it runs any. It does when you do the validation. It runs a workload, and you can tailor it for LN2, so it's not as um, dramatic. Oh, and it runs yeah. very quick, but it wants to run like a fully loaded test to make sure that the frequency is actually there right. like, mm -hmm. during the load. Okay. But it's nothing close to like a Cinebench yeah. work. No, why the it's very well. short. Yeah. That we we could do it. We'll get to a high frequency if you if you want to try that. I mean, when we're done. Yeah. Yeah, because that's different than loading it, right? This part, I don't know. Like, it's, it'll do six nine. Right. Um, is what we did at Tech Day, I think. So. Oh, so I wanted to know the wattage that we were seeing earlier. I think total system was like, f f I think the highest I saw was like 500, but you may have mm -hmm. seen higher. That was at 1.6, mm. and then we lowered it, um, and uh, and it went down 100 watts, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is booting, it looks like. That's good, nice. Let's see, check on. 
Gandalf LN Tupot. I was trying to figure out why. That was just one of the comments. Gandalf LN Tupot. Which uh, one? Because it's so big or what? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. It's like in a white robe, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's got the white robes and the. We just need like a wizard oh, hat for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think the new Rings of Power comes out tonight. Oh, yeah. Steve, make an all two checklist. Yeah, I mean, I am probably going to go back through the stream at points and look at the bio settings and stuff and, um, and write down what the main changes were. Okay, so... Uh... Was there something you changed, or we just had like the cold? It just crashed from cold, right? And then yeah, I didn't change anything okay. in BIOS. I just made sure that the settings were still there. Right. Um, and they weren't, so I loaded the profile. Oh, OK. Yeah, because right. that's why it took so long to post. So, um, so what's happening is it's uh, memory training is failing, and uh. then it's going into memory recovery mode, and that's causing that, that effect. So we're trying to get that solved. OK. Gotcha. Nick's not happy. Some other people are not happy with it. <laughs> you have to heat up quite a bit to recover from that. Yeah. Right? LN2 mode is only going to help you so much. Well, minus 150 trying to get down to minus 108 takes a while. Yeah, I, I, you know, and there's a two terms, right? There's a cold bug and cold boot bug. Oh, okay. Two different yeah. things, right? So, cold bug is just how how cold can you operate, or a cold boot bug is what temperature can you boot at? Got it. That's and good to and know. Yeah, and typically those are two different temperatures. I don't think I was making a distinction yeah. ever, so that's that is. Yeah. So like on this board, like the cold bug, like on this part, we're hitting at about minus one fifty five, minus one sixty, but the cold boot bug, we're hitting at like minus one oh eight. Okay. So. Minus 108 seems to be like the magic number. I've seen that on a few parts now. Yeah. I had a lot that were 118 on the dot. Um, <laughs> so. Let's see. Okay. Uh, I did not apply yet. So I guess I'll bring. To I'm like a. F I'm, I'm a little too afraid, I think, of minus 150, but just because the recovery time. But let's okay. apply. Start that because I dropped it to 150. Oh, oh no. Okay. okay. So let's see. Is it alive? No. So that's definitely a graphics. That's GPU. Glitch, and, yeah. and to clarify, uh, when we're using the word alive or dead here, we're not talking about the parts. Just, <laughs> the, just if it's still on. Yeah, that's the green screen. Yeah, <laughs> the green screen. So that's graphics. You're yeah, saying? That's graphics. Yeah. So did we give GFX off? Uh, should be, yes. I checked it earlier. And we can prob we'll see how long it takes to get in. It might be, I might stop at 6.225, because uh, that is better than my last one. <laughs> so that was the goal, yeah. We did get past the goal, which is awesome. Uh, that was at 1.45 also, so big gulf there between what I was, the 1.55 we're just trying to do. Um, let's see what chat's saying while we, uh, I'll let you guys get it. We'll, we can try another boot, I guess, but I'll start winding uh, some of the chat down too. So, okay, yeah, so for people, did you guys get, this is funny, because it's, we've been live for a while now, so I, not everyone's gotten like the, the background. Did you guys get bold, uh, gold binned CPUs from AMD. This is AMD. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully that answers that question. Uh, I mean, they no, they they worked on on some parts and brought them in. I think is really yeah. these are parts we brought. It. Yeah. yeah, they're not. They're by no means a golden sample. Yeah. Um, in fact, a lot of our partners. Oh, is the mic off? It. Yeah. Mike, yeah. Okay. So no, these, these these are not special screened parts of in, in any kind of way at all. Um, and really. Um, a lot of our partners are better enabled to screen mass quantities of parts, and they do so. And mm -hmm. they often find, you know, a lot of the golden samples that you see on launch day and stuff like that. So yeah, and they use them for like marketing and promotion mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. So it they makes them makes out sense. To the OC partners, right? Oh. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's, yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, no. unmuted. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. And sometimes people get very emotionally attached to those magic parts. Right, so, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it takes a lot of work, I guess, to identify them. Yeah, and like you have that one part that's 100 megahertz faster than anything else, right? That's right. gold. You know? Right. Oh. Or that it can full pot, yeah, because some yeah. of the parts are easier than others to get to full pot. So, but no, no golden samples, mm -hmm. no screening or anything right. like that. Uh, let me try, I'll try one more time. Was, uh, was, is there anything I need to do about the last failure that we saw or is that just? So just check Ryzen Master for the voltages and make okay. sure that it didn't clear CMOS again. Okay, that's. So um, just go to home, stay on oh, home. home, okay. And um, then. Scroll down and let's look here. Voltage, oh yeah, 1.35 yeah, minutes. Yeah, it's, it's you're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, cool. It's been so long since I've like actually really used Ryzen Master. It, it looks a lot more uh, detailed than last time I worked with it. Yeah, we've been adding stuff like curve optimizers built in there now. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, this screen looks pretty familiar to me, but um, the main screen. Yeah, it's, like, it's got more <coughs> on it. Also, really quick, the torch is in front of. Oh, thanks, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so bring it to like, I guess we'll go the same range, right? Like minus maybe 150-ish, minus 148 yeah. or something. So what I, what yeah. What I'd say, maybe you try to make a run at 6.3. How does that sound? Okay, yeah, let's yeah. do 6.3, yeah. 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 That sounds good to me. Let's do 6.3 at, offset's still in there, I guess. Should be. That load with the profile. You can check with CPU-Z, it should be though, okay. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. CPU-Z just in. Uh, it's on the desktop. desktop. Okay. It was D. That's the way to do it. Have you, did I? <laughs> did you know that one? Oh, on home, yeah, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> 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 I taught you something. Uh, uh, on CPU tab. CPU. So it says 136. What did you set? Cur He's currently he nothing is set, yeah. Okay, then it's 125. So it's still 100 millivolt offset, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's a good way to check, yeah. Uh, so. All right, so 6.3 is what we're going to go for. Yeah, uh, the dial, I use the scroll wheel. Yeah. Oh, okay. scroll wheel works too? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's yeah. Now that's <laughs> the best trick I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you get the exact 25 megahertz. All right, uh, okay, so 1.45 with 100 millivolts offset. Mm -hmm. Do a little more down to like minus 147, just because I'm copying where Amit was keeping <laughs> it. Um, let's apply, and it's at minus 141 right now. I get the load started. Damn. Oh okay, that's graphics. <laughs> All right, so I'll call it there on my attempts, but uh, I guess I, I don't know, is, is there anything, if, if I come back to this at some point, um, is there anything to do specifically when this when the green screen like grabs? Actually, I haven't seen that particular issue before, um, so that's new. Might but just be I mean, I think we're all kind of familiar with the green screen. I yeah. haven't seen one in a long time, though. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know what that is. Okay. So, but later on in the new uh, BIOS, one of the things we'll do is turn off graphics off mm. in LN2 mode, so you don't have to do it because right now there's not an easy way for an end user to do it. So okay, we're gonna, yeah. well, that's, that's going to be fixed. I'm so going to switch spots right um, here. And that should avoid most of the problems with, with the iGPU. Um, after we do that, it's been pretty trouble-free. So. Uh, yeah, I think um, the run up there, the run you guys had before switching off, I feel like was really strong after getting the board swapped and stuff. Yeah. So pretty strong run up to 48.3-ish K points, 6.475 gigahertz for frequency. Uh, validation, we were talking about you guys were doing like seven something previously in CPU-Z, 725? 725. Um, is that posted on HardwareBot no. or anything? No. No, because like, there's not. So on HardwareBot, it's independent of number of cores. It's all, uh, all the records are. Oh, uh, they're like a Old Athlon, right? Yeah, so. Okay, yeah. yeah. Like eight, over eight. Right, I smell the. Uh, Paper towels burning. Yeah. yeah, I got a, a singed it a little there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so we are gonna we're gonna wrap up. I've learned a ton from this, so extremely helpful. And 
for any of you who are interested in this stuff, like we've been saying before, you don't have to get into liquid nitrogen stuff and overclocking actually on Ryzen 7000 now, um, you really almost, I feel like shouldn't do just a simple all core. If you're going to use it daily, you should maybe do like more of the optimizer type stuff. Because yep. mm -hmm. all core, you're going to, if you lock an all core stable, you're going to lose some of that top end frequency and single thread. Right. I mean, it depends on your workload. We enable you to tune it either way. So right. if you are running a workload and that's all core and you can get something out of an all core yeah. OC, um, you don't care as much about the single threaded performance or you're that's not true. gaming on yeah. it, right? Um, that's a good way to go. But PBO, that's mm -hmm. what I use at home and Curve Optimizer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like for your own use, I think the, the Curve Optimizer PBO route's the way to go. Right. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, hopefully, you picked up some information along the way. I'll probably do a quick recap of like some of the key points we've talked about, some of the non-OC Q&A we did throughout the session, and put it into one of the hardware news videos as a recap, so we can get all the key details in there. And uh, I guess, oh, I haven't told you how we end the stream, so now everyone's going to know the secret. Oh, Andrew's got it. OK. No, you're not going to know the secret. Oh, oh. man. <laughs> no. Right, Andrew. I, I don't just got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, I don't, know what, I don't know what the new secret is. All right, I'm going to start wrapping up, and then Andrew is going to figure out what to do. Thank <laughs> you all for watching, <laughs> and uh, check back for additional follow-ups we want to do on Ryzen 7000 series. Again, thank you, Bill and Amit, for Thanks. joining. And Thanks for having us, Steve. Thank you, and we will see you all next time.